Howard Twilley of Tulsa leads off our offensive lineup. For Vincent! Welcome to Chapman Stadium on the campus of the University of Tulsa for today's Conference USA clash between the Golden Hurricane and the Thundering Herd from the University of Marshall. I'm Mike Wolf alongside former TU quarterback and head coach Dave Rader. And coach, we're going to talk quarterbacks. Paul Smith, the senior, not only does he have leadership, but he possesses some skills, and now he's got some great receivers to throw to. He certainly does. Paul Smith is special. There's no question about that. But what has been incredible about this passing game is how much the receivers and this quarterback are on the same page. You would think with that much inexperience of being together that sometimes they would be off. Paul Smith finds them over and over again. They're in the right spot. They're well coached and this offense clicks because they are on the same page. He's got five straight 300 yard passing games. Defense is where the Golden Hurricane have struggled and that cost them a win last week in El Paso as they lost 48-47. As we look at the standings, TU with that one loss of course they're not at the top of the standings but a couple of years ago they lost in El Paso and were able to get some help and end up winning the Conference USA title. But the one loss can, can be overcome. They just can't have another one. They're sitting really, really nice right there, and you know, the destiny is in their hands. A must win tonight, but they're all must wins anymore. All right, it's homecoming at Chapman Stadium. TU and Marshall were back with the starting lineups and the opening kickoff from Chapman Stadium. You're watching Golden Hurricane Football on the Cox Channel. This Cox Channel presentation of Golden Hurricane Football is brought to you by Case and Associates. Cox Telephone, $19.99 per month, fully loaded. We are first high atop Chapman Stadium for tonight's homecoming game between Marshall and the University of Tulsa. Dave Rader, Mike Wolf, and let's send it down to the third member of our broadcast team. That's Rod Thompson. Hey guys, thanks a lot. Great atmosphere, as we said. It is homecoming at TU, and you always have the TU faithful out. But hey, they came out a little early for, for tailgating. They started earlier than normal. Now they're starting to come in. We talked about this atmosphere. As you can see behind me, a lot of the former players have come. Even had some of the great players lead the team out as they get ready for tonight's matchup against Marshall. So guys, an outstanding atmosphere. I'll be down on the sideline. As I said, they brought back a lot of the former players to be able to come back, mingle together, and cheer their team on as they try to get another win in Conference USA. Should be great. Great night for football. I'll be down here keeping you up with all the action. Back up to you, Mike. All right. Thank you, Rod. Mark Snyder in his third season with the Thundering Herd, 9-19, and, and, of course, 0-5 this year, but they were five and seven, four and four in Conference USA a season ago. Todd Graham in his first season back with the Golden Hurricane. He served as defensive coordinator for Steve Crackville for three years, went down to Rice, turned around the Owls program, and he's back as head coach of the Golden Hurricane, three and two and one and one in Conference USA. And Dave Marshall won the toss and deferred, and T will receive and defend the North goal as we get set to kick things off here at homecoming. A little bit of breeze going right to left on your screen. We'll play a factor tonight. This ball probably should reach the goal line. We'll see if uh, Tulsa will take it out of there. The question is, is, is it going to affect uh, Paul Smith? You know, will they throw it to the wind or not? And I bet we'll find out on the first play. I bet we will find out very quickly. Trey Johnson and A.J. Whitmore back to receive the kick. And it is into the end zone where Johnson will down it and T.U. will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Calls is going to huddle on the sideline as uh, per their habit and, and then go as fast as they can from then on and run as many plays as possible tonight, trying to reset 80 plays plateau, maybe 90 plays tonight. And we'll see what's called here. They're going to wait and see what Marshall has on the defense, and they're going to st stay with standard personnel, and we're off and running right now, right? Yeah, Smith comes in with 1,827 yards and 15 touchdowns already, and that's through five games for the six foot two, 193-pound senior. First and 10, TU from the 20. Man in motion is Williams. The handoff to Charles Clay, the fullback, the freshman fullback, and he trips Charles over a defender, and he's knocked down after a gain of about three and a half on the play. Looked like there, looked like there was a corner there for just a second, and then it, then it collapsed. 
Here's the offensive starters for the Golden Hurricane. The big guys up front, Walter Boyd, Kurt Pickett, Jody Whaley, and Justin Morsey. Wide out, Deion Tolliver as well. Roderick Thomas rounds out the offensive line. Then it's Clemens, Collins, and you saw the rest. Terry on Adams out of the backfield. Quick pass to Clay as Smith hits his full back over towards the left sideline. He is knocked out of bounds by J.J. Johnson, but that will bring up a Golden Hurricane first down as we take a look at the Marshall defender, C.J. Spillman, Yannick, Tinker, Moore, and Wilson up front. The DBs and linebackers, Saunders, Hall, Hoskins, Johnson, Kitchens, and Marcus Fitzgerald. First down, T.U. as Paul Smith fires, and it's overthrown, intended for the big fella, 85, and that is Jake Collins. Maybe just a little early game jitters as the ball is just a little bit high. The, the route was open, good call, good Good warm-up call, if you know, you know what I'm saying there, Mike. You know, get, get in the groove, Paul. Now let's start striking people. Second down, that was Kyle Grooms that Smith overthrew on that last play. Deion Tolliver in motion. Inside handoff is Clay. Clay with three touches already here in the opening minutes of the first quarter. He gets across the 35-yard line to about the 36. Maurice Kitchens, the linebacker, the Willie linebacker for the Thundering Herd, brings him down. Smith in the shotgun again from the 36. TU facing a third and eight. Three receivers out to the right, one to the left. Smith throws, and it is caught for a Golden Hurricane first down. Cameron Clements, who caught his first touchdown just a week ago, is there to make the reception. Great throw there by Paul Smith. Coach. Paul Smith is, is an excellent throw, but what an excellent read. You saw the rotation of the secondary. He took advantage of it, and first down for Tulsa. Pickup of 10, and Smith is swarmed in the backfield and sacked Maurice Kitchens there again to put the pressure on Smith, and TU backed up a little bit on the sack. Yeah, it looks, looks as though that maybe Paul was a little bit outside or the tackle was confused at how far Paul was going to go outside because when he set up to block, he thought he had his man blocked and then Paul was, was a little bit outside and the defensive end makes it a fine play. Loss of nine on the play and in to take the snap was Whitmore. He hands to Clay. He's got some running room, knocks over the defender, gets across midfield. He's knocked out of bounds and they're going to call a late hit. Yep. Zernick Matthews, the quarterback, gives an extra pop to Clay as he gets out of bounds. Boy, what an, a fine call that was. A, a, again, another personnel set that Marshall has to work on. Tulsa puts a non-quarterback in the backfield and then hands it off to their fine this runner back to get the corner, and knock it down, the and then the running back gets more yardage on his own. And then, the, you know, the marshal coaches, oh, man, don't, don't add some more on this, and then hit him out of bounds again. So it goes from second long to first down. They had insult to injury, and so that'll tack on an extra 15. The TU in great field position. The referee today is Steve Barth, the umpire Michael Cooper, back judge Tom Hudson, and the side judge Jim Quirk. And the line judge tonight, Otis Clyatt, Dick Wittenberg, and Terry Williams also on the officiating crew for tonight's homecoming game with the Golden Hurricane and Marshall. First down, TU from the 33-yard line screen pass to Terry on Adams. The first time he's got his hands on the ball tonight, and he is going nowhere as C.J. Spillman, the first of a herd of Marshall defenders to get to the ball carry. Excellent job on Marshall right there, Mike. So far in the game, Marshall has been rotating their coverage to the field, to the field, to the field. This time they came into the boundary. Tulsa had a good play into the boundary. It's just that Marshall had a better defense, and that's why they made the play. So the loss of three will make it second and 13 for TU. Fake handoff. Smith trying to get out of trouble again. Breaks three, throws right, and has a man, but the pass is incomplete, intended for Clay, who was standing just a couple of yards into the end zone. A little Houdini move by Paul, huh? Yeah. He spins around here, and he spins around there, and he looks downfield, and throws the ball where it has to be. Either Tulsa's going to score, or the ball's going to go out of bounds. Very safe throw. Paul has proven to be a lot more elusive than some teams uh, expect when they come to face the Golden Hurricane. From the 36, fake to Tolliver, 
Smith steps up, thinks about running, gets rid of it, and he's hit as he throws, so the pass ball's incomplete, and they're making the pressure was number 27 for Marshall, and Smith just lucky to get rid of it. How about this decision here? You're on the 36-yard line, you're going into the wind. If you punt, most likely you're gonna have a 16-yard punt here in that game. It looks like Coach Graham says, you know what? Uh, I, I have confidence in you guys, let's go for it. So fourth and 13, four receivers set with Adams in the backfield. Nearly drawing Marshall offsides. So Smith is going to call an audible at the line of scrimmage and pooch by Instead, he fakes the pooch punt, rolls right, fires, and it is incomplete, intended for Clemens, and so Marshall will take over the football in their own territory, first and 10. Excellent discipline by the Marshall defense right there. Tulsa gave him a look, gave him another look, looked like the pooch punt was coming, and then they never bit, to, you know, on the receiver or on the fake by the quarterback, and they were in position to make the play, and that's the only thing Ball could do. But right there and then, again, you're really you're none the worse for the wear right there. That's right. Bernie Morris, the quarterback for the Thundering Herd. We're going to take a timeout. Scoreless here at homecoming at Chapman Stadium. Back with more football. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. And welcome back to homecoming at Chapman Stadium. Marshall's Thundering Herd with the football for the first time offensively. We'll tell you about their starters in just a moment. Morris, the quarterback, a short dump off screen with a whistle on the play. We'll see what this one is. It's gonna be procedure against uh, Marshall. Somebody was just moving a little bit too quick. You're looking at Hassmore on your screen and what a name for a wide receiver. You don't even have to say no. anything, just flash. What do you back. want, Hassmore? <laughs> Bernie Morris, the quarterback for the Thundering Hurts, got some pretty good numbers. We'll show you those in just a second. But he and backs Kelvin Turner and Chubb Small all bothered by turf toe. There's his numbers, 1,307 yards passing, nine touchdowns and five interceptions on the season. But he's also rushed for 136 yards, so he can be a dual threat out of the backfield. There he avoids Anthony Germany, runs to his left. Nowhere to go. He's finally out of bounds at the 29-yard line as Alan Karatapian pushes him out. There's the offensive starters for Marshall. Passmore, we mentioned him. John Inman, Evans, Ligurski, and Leggett, the guys up front, along with Daniel Baldridge. Then it's Brian Shope, the tight end, Matt Parkhurst, Morris Edmondson, and Darius Marshall. That'll bring up a second down and 17 for the Thundering Herd. Morris, good throw, but Roy Roberts there for the coverage intended for Passmore, and that'll bring up a third and long for the Thundering Herd. Here's the TU defense. Defensive end Wilson Garrison, also Brandon Jones, Moten Hopkins, up front Anthony Germany, Randy Duncan, a couple of the DBs, along with Charles Davis, linebackers Alan Karatapian, Nelson Coleman, and Chris Chamberlain, a lot of experience there, Henderson and Craver in the defensive backfield as well, and Henderson's a guy that was a wide receiver, has switched over to defensive back in the last couple of weeks. Third and 17 from the 29-yard line. Morris in the shotgun. Has time. Fires and overthrows his intended receiver, and that'll bring up a fourth down and a punting situation for the Thundering Herd. For the Tulsa defense, this is a critical series. To go three and out, boost their confidence so very, very much. Marshall has only scored five points total all year in the first quarter, so they are a slow starting team. Tulsa has to take advantage of that and keep it nil for the first quarter. Anthony Binswanger back to punt for the Thundering Herd. Trey Johnson set to receive it for the Golden Hurricane. Beautiful kick by Binswanger. 
and it will go into the end zone and out a 71 yard kick so the Golden Hurricane will take over first and 10 from their own 20 yard line in a scoreless homecoming affair with 11.42 to go in the first coach. Excellent judgment by Trey Johnson right there. You're taught to put your heels on the 10 yard line if you back up and let the ball go. He backed up. He said well I really really want to catch that ball but I, I have to let it go and that's what happens. The ball scoots in the end zone. Now you, you put your offense on the 20 yard line rather than inside the 10. The TU has certainly put up plenty of points this year. 47 last week 38 the week before against UAB so offensively they have been dynamic so far this season Terry on Adams the handoff has running room across the 30 to about the 33 yard line his helmet comes off but it's a golden hurricane first down two times in a row Tulsa has been on the minus 20 and they come with a sweet play to the right side Terry and Adams excellent vision and then has the acceleration once he sees the hole 13 yards on that pickup. He had a career best 183 in the victory over free play, Alabama free play. Birmingham. Free, free play for TU, a wobbler by Smith. It is going to fall incomplete, intended for Johnson. He was hoping for a flag there, not going to get it, but one back at the line of scrimmage that will help out the Hurricane. I think he has a lot of people voting for him right now on, on that. Uh, many people saying that sure looked like interference on that. Again, Paul Smith, so sharp knows Marshall has violated the uh, neutral zone. He has a free play, so he throws it down there and almost the big play. So that'll move him up five and bring up a first and five for TU at the 39 yard line. This their second possession of the ball game tonight. It's also receiving the signal from the bench. Setting the uh, protection now. Smith takes the snap, hands off Adams. Running room across the 45 to the 47 yard line and Adams is tackled there, but a pickup and a first down for TU. Tulsa must have seen something in the videotape during the week say, let's run right, let's run right, because almost every run play now has gone to the right. They are having push made by the offensive line. They have a good forward lean to him right now, and that running back is uh, really special. So first down at the 47 for the Hurricane. Smith fires to his left, high pass, incomplete, intended for Clemens. That'll bring up a second down, and let's send it down to the field, and Rod Thompson, Rod. Hey guys, down here on the sideline, and Coach Rader pointed on it, how important that defensive possession was for TU. Coach Graham felt like this was their best week of practice. Defense really needed to come together, and they did that job in that first series. Also offensively, guys, you see, you know, Paul Smith, maybe not as accurate, but when you're down here on the field, you realize how hard this wind is really blowing, and you've seen a couple of the passes, not as tight as they usually are, but the wind is really strong, and he's fighting that wind right now, so they're doing an outstanding job, Coach Graham. He's been really pleased with what the offensive line has been able to do so far, giving him time. And now you see him loosening up, fighting, finding his receiver. The wind really strong down here on the field. Back up here. Smith fires to the sideline for a 14-yard pickup as Trey Johnson gets the feet down out of uh, before he goes out of bounds. Okay. A nice okay. play there. Excellent point by Rod on the win. So they're at the 39, option left to Adams. He's going to carry and break free across the 30, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Another big play for the Golden Hurricane offense. Oh, we uh, have a chance to watch this one again. Watch number 85, Kyle Grooms, with the uh, block out front. Here's the pitch, and right in the right part of your screen right there, 85 on the ground. That's what springs uh, Terry in right there, and then he knows what to do when he has green all around him. 15-yard pickup, first and 10 at the 24 as TU driving, trying to get on the scoreboard here. And here it's go. Clay. And he gets across the 15 to about the 13-yard line, and that's another TU first down. Nice combination of plays. Run play, play action, run play, play action, and then a drop back. Tulsa has a nice plan working for him right now. Seven first downs already. And we're only four and a half minutes in to the first quarter here at Chapman Stadium. First down from the 13 for TU. Smith will hand it. And 
ball carrier stumbles forward for just a couple. That is Jamad Williams, the freshman. Can't say enough about the middle part of the line, Mike. The, the, the push on that play right there sprung the running back, and he was into the linebackers and, and going to the secondary before the defensive line could even knew what was going on. Excellent job up front right now. Second and five for TU, scoreless ball game. Inside handoff to Williams again, down to about the five, maybe just short of it, which will bring up a third and short for the Golden Hurricane. Little inside power play. And try to head a little fake to the wide receiver there just to keep the linebacker's eyes open. And then the uh, guard coming around makes a nice push. And uh, Tulsa is just a, a few yard away from the first down and a little bit uh, longer to the uh, touchdown. Unbalanced. And it's Adams, and it's a touchdown. No signal yet. There it is. Terion Adams, a touchdown for TU. They're on the board, 6 nothing. This looks so simple, but for Tulsa to make this play work, they've had to practice it over and over again because they come out of the huddle, they go to the line of scrimmage, and they snap the ball before Marshall recognizes his unbalanced. They have a man advantage, and the man advantage puts them into the end zone. Jared Tracy in to kick the extra point for the Golden Hurricane. The hole by Paul Hirado. It's up. And it's good. So with 9.15 to go here in the first quarter, it's the Golden Hurricane 7. The Marshall Thundering Herd 0. We're going to take a timeout. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. Welcome back to Chapman Stadium. Golden Hurricane leading 7-0 on the strength of a Terion Adams short touchdown run. Want to watch up to eight live college football games at once? Cox now offers the end zone on channel 993 each Saturday during the football season. Nobody does high school and college sports better than Cox because we are your home for live sports coverage of your favorite teams. Don't have Cox Digital Cable? Give us a call in Tulsa at 286-4201. You watch eight games at once? What was that? Eight live games going on? Mm-hmm. We'll have to check into that. Paul Hirado set to kick it for the Golden Hurricane. And back to receive for Marshall is Emmanuel, actually, Mr. Darius Marshall. He's got the football at the 25 across the 30, breaks the tackle, and gets across the 45 to about the 47-yard line. And Coach Raider, special teams has really plagued to you. That's been one of their weaknesses. They finally got the deeper kicks last week. Uh, but again, when you catch it on about the 18 or 20 yard line, it certainly can set up Marshall with some great deal. That way they had the deep kick going this way. And uh, this, this last drive was very impressive. And we'll talk more about special teams. But Terry and Adams was the man on this drive. Here's the pitch from uh, Paul Smith. Again, the fine block, and he takes it to the inside the, to the 25 on this one. And then, of course, uh, the touchdown run here. Nice run by 2-5, Terry and Adams right there. Showing he can run right, run left, run up the middle. TU really doing a great job of mixing up the run and the pass so far this evening. Marshall from the 47. Morris takes the handoff. Is flushed out of the pocket. going to tuck it and run, get across midfield, and hit the deck at about the 47-yard line. Nelson Coleman there to help bring him down. And if you're if you're a Tulsa defensive coach, you're liking this right now. You brought a little bit of pressure. You flushed the quarterback, but they're looking deep, and there's nothing deep happening. And for the past few weeks, those long passes, those deep plays, have been given Tulsa fits. So right now, Marshall's looking for them, and they aren't there. Anthony Germany in the backfield again to help pressure Morris out of the pocket. Handoff goes to Marshall. He's across to about the 43-yard line, and that is going to be very close to a thundering herd first down. Yep. Looks like this is their first first down of the evening. Made it. Nice job by the quarterback setting up the short uh, second down uh, conversion. He is a fine-looking athlete, and you can see why his numbers are so good. So first and 10 for Marshall. 
TU leading at 7-0 as we approach the eight-minute mark of the first quarter on a homecoming Saturday. TU has won two straight homecoming games and trying to make it three in a row tonight. Morris this time has time and fires over the middle, has a man, but it falls incomplete. Alan Karatapian on the coverage. The pass intended for Cody Slate, the 6'4", 225-pound sophomore. And I know, talking to some Marshall folks this week, that he's a guy that certainly has some speed and a guy they would like to get down the middle of the field. Hey, AK was all over him right here. A little play action away from AK, and they throw back over the outside shoulder. He had him covered to the inside. If that ball goes to the middle, the free safety is going to make the pick. Excellent scheme, and it worked because the guys did what they were supposed to do. Nice job to AK right there. Inside handoff to Marshall, and he's not going anywhere. Tackle made by Clinkscale. Number eight for TU. Nice job right there. Small. Uh, it's also had brought a blitz on, on that play. He shot the gaps. Uh, they played their leverage, and then clean scales uh, just came a little bit free and makes a tackle. Sets up the third and long right here. You, you, this is a good time to hold them. So it's a third down and 10 for the Thundering Herd at the 42 and a half of TU. Golden Hurricane showing some glimpses of a blitz. It's picked up. He fires. Slate has it. But he's not going to get the first down, depending on the loss. Chamberlain, yeah. Nice job right there. Can't say enough about the uh, deep coverage. It's also forcing the ball to go underneath. Excellent job, really, by the quarterback here. He's looking down, looking down. Now he has to come down a secondary receiver, puts the ball where it has to be. The Chamberlain's right there, and it's not to be. He had 15 stops last week, including four tackles for loss in the loss in El Paso. Chamberlain, an outstanding linebacker for the Golden Hurricane. Also looking for the fake right here. Fourth down and about seven. Kick is up. And off his foot. Oh. Takes a Marshall bounce. And it'll be down at about the 13 yard line. And that's where Paul Smith and the Golden Hurricane offense will take over, leading seven to nothing with 6.13 to go here in the first quarter of play. That, that pounce really made the punt turn out to be a, a good punt right here. All right, we're going to take a timeout. Hurricane leading seven nothing. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. started first and 10 from the 12 and Terry on Adams pick up of about nine as he takes it across the 20 yard line as they continue to go to the well and that well has been very productive here in the last couple of minutes. Sure has. I'm watching Jody Whaley right in the center of the action play. He, he has total control now with his offensive lineman making every call. From the 21 it's Adams again and he's hit and dropped at about the 24 yard line. That's going to be a first down for the Golden Hurricane. And in to make the tackle is Zernick Matthews for the Thundering Herd. Excellent tackle made by the corner right there. Toss again, uh, shuffling personnel groups in and out, causing Marshall to shuffle their personnel groups in and out. From the 24, TU has it first and 10. And Adams again Ball. loses the handle. Paul Smith, headsy play there to pounce on it. So TU will hold on to the football, and that'll bring up a very good point, Coach. Marshall opponents this season have fumbled 10 times. This was number 11. They've only recovered one. Wow. So the bounces have certainly gone against the Thundering Herd all season long. They have just one fumble recovery and one interception, just two turnovers in five games, all losses for the Thundering Herd. And their record reflects that, because some of those, I'm sure, would have changed the game. So they're at the 20-yard line. A loss of four on the fumble by Adams. Smith almost loses the handle. Throws. And Matthews on the coverage. Tolliver over there, the intended receiver, and he was looking for a flag. And 
Yeah. Is not going to get it. Yeah, he said, man, I was bugged right there. And a lot of people were agreeing with him. Uh, Paul uh, didn't handle the snap very well right there. He had his eyes downfield and he recovered in time. Thought he might go for the, uh, the, the deeper receiver right there. They had a step on him. Uh, good choice, though, coming underneath when you really don't have control of the ball. Third and long. See what they can do here. Third and 14. Got to get across the 34-yard line for a first down. Marsh showing blitz. Smith hangs in the pocket, throws high, intended for Brennan Marion. Incomplete, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Fourth down and a hit on Paul Smith. It's the first time Paul's been hit tonight. Just a little bit off. I wonder, and I don't know if Rod is listening right now. Rod, I wonder if the wind is still blowing in, and maybe that ball was pushed a little bit to the outside. Emmanuel Spann back to receive the punt. Kick away. Not a very good one, and it's going to go out of bounds at about the 49-yard line. They'll call it the 48. It'll be first and 10 for Marshall right there. And uh, Coach Rader mentioned the win. Let's go down to the field and check in with Rod Thompson. Rod. Hey, guys, Coach Rader, the win is definitely up, blowing pretty hard right now into the face of TU and talked about a little bit earlier about, you know, Paul Smith, you know, some of those passes, you can tell the win has had a control over a couple of them. They're really trying to keep it on the ground and run some, but the win is normally stronger. It kind of gusts up, kind of goes down. So kind of tricky, you know, being a quarterback because you could put something on and he's been pretty efficient. You could put something on a gust of wind could come and it will pick up and you'd be in trouble and ball's kind of all over the place. But it is really strong in the face of TU. That's why they feel good about what the ground game has been able to do because passing has been pretty tough. Back up to you. End around to pass more and he gets across midfield to the 47 yard line for a pickup of about five on the play. It's interesting how Marshall finds different ways to have the ball in the hands of pass more. You know, they just uh, hand it off to him. It looks like that he and the quarterback are pretty much on the same page. The quarterback's going to look for him. And he does seem to have some explosive speed. Hopefully, it doesn't come into fruition tonight. From the 47, second and five. Handoff and some running room for Darius Marshall. He gets across the 40. And he goes out of bounds Darius across the 40. Marshall. They're going to mark it right at the 40-yard line. First down, thundering herd. You know, Chris Chamberlain, it, you just keep talking about it. He is such a fine player. And for him to come all the way across the field from the other side of the line of or the uh, formation to make that play save Tulsa about five or six yards. Watch him flash across your screen left to right. 32 is going to show up right now. Just enough to get him out of bounds. And you're right, avoid him stretching the sideline. First down from the 40-yard line. 3.51 to go here in the opening quarter of play. Handoff again to Passmore. Very similar to the play they ran on first down. He gets, there oh, is. they're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the 34-yard line. He is fast. To turn the corner like that, Tulsa had the leverage on him. They were running inside out, and he still turned the corner. He's a six foot three, 180 pound junior is Passmore and definitely showing some wheels on these touches here on this possession. You know, as Morris always looking at his wrist, the, the plays are on the wrist and he just reads them off there. More and more teams are going to that, Mike, because and I don't want to go into the NFL, but sometimes you think your uh, <laughs> signals are stolen. The From the 34, second and about four for Marshall. Play action, fires back to his right, and nice defensive play as the pass was intended for Cody Slate and knocked away by Mr. Charles Davis. There, there's some closing speed right there by Charles because for an instant, the outcut was open. It looked like the pass was gonna be completed and right at the last instant, uh, Charles comes in there and knocks it away. Right here, there's a fingernail on it right there. Nice job. And that's a tough throw to make, too, isn't it? Because it's only maybe yes. nine yards downfield, but it's about 30 yards across the field. Especially when you look left and then have to spin back around and throw it right. So third and four. Also showing blitz. Ten men up on the line of scrimmage for the Golden Hurricane with Morris in the shotgun. 
Fires over the middle, low throw, but it is complete and a first down for the Thundering Herd. Yeah, Jay Wynn making the grab. You have to give it to Marshall right there. That, that, that blitz brought everybody that Tulsa could bring, and they picked it up. And look at the time that the quarterback has to make that throw. That, that's what made it happen there. They picked up the blitz. Nice job by the front of Marshall. And E.J. Wynn doing a good job to go down and, and get his arms wrapped around him. So first down Marshall from the 22-yard line as they try to get on the scoreboard here at homecoming at Chapman Stadium. Throw across the middle and Chamberlain there to make the tackle is Brian Shope, the big tight end, 6'5", 248, makes the catch. You, you just have to, you, you have to love 32. Watch him right here. He's going to read, play, come back. No, it's going to be a pass. Oh, I know he's going to throw it too. Yeah, I knew that. And then I'll tap him. Yeah, go ahead. Nice job. Get excited. Like it. Short pickup of just a yard is the ball hawk making the tackle. Of course, this linebacking core for the Golden Hurricane has seen their share of starts and has a wealth of experience, and it shows here tonight. Morris looking long, fires short to Marshall, and he is met by three Golden Hurricanes, Roberts, Chamberlain, and oh, the first on the spot was Mr. Craver, Stephen Craver. And they keep him from going anywhere. What a nice call by Paul Randolph right there, the defensive coordinator for Tulsa. They've just shown a blitz with man. They showed the blitz again, and they come back into a zone, and then boom, the ball's thrown right into the zone uh, that Tulsa wanted to throw it into. Excellent call, excellent execution. You know, one of the things that Coach Graham has said is that the defense is just now catching up. They're so used to not being on the field for as many plays, but this no huddle offense by TU means the defense out there for much longer, and that may explain why they're allowing so many points per game. Morris gets rid of it just as he's hit, and the pass falls incomplete intended for Passmore. Randy Duncan there on the coverage for the Golden Hurricane. You see, that's why this game is a game of inches, because if you don't hit the quarterback right there, then he's going to make the, the play, and it's going to be a touchdown for Marshall. But because you go all out, and you give effort, and you hit the quarterback, then the ball is just a little bit overthrown. So fourth and eight, Anthony Benswanger in to attempt the field goal. They'll set it down at about the 27, making it a 37-yard attempt. Kick is up. And it is good. The Thundering Herd are on the scoreboard with a minute 30 to go in the first period. TU leads it 7-3. to three. So they bent a little bit, but then break as Marshall put together some impressive numbers there, especially using Passmore as a running back. No question. I think Marshall came out and did a few things like you're saying. You know, we used to call them tricks, but they're not anymore. You, you're just putting the ball in one of your best players' hands. But what Tulsa did right there is have their back against the wall. The drive started on the 50-yard line, only give up 30 yards, force the field goal kick. They still have to make the field goal. Mm -hmm. And now they, they hold them three with a short field. Now, you have to come to the bench right now, Mike, and say, hey, good job again, guys. You know, they, they started halfway to the goal line. We held them to three. I mean, we're playing well right now. Now we're going, you know, let's go out next time. Let's get that turnover we're talking about. Let's hold them. Let's get a three now, whatever it is. And let's, get, let's help our offense, and we'll get more points here as the second quarter is coming up. And, and, you, and you have to wonder now, when the wind goes with Tulsa, will things change? Can Bernard Morris be as an effective passer into the win as he's been with the win? A.J. Whitmore and Trey Johnson back to receive the kick from Marshall. Ben Swanger's kick is up. And it's going to be Whitmore from near his own goal line. Got a hole. Got a hole across the 40-yard line to the 43. And that's going to set up TU with outstanding field position, a 41-yard return on the kickoff. You could just kind of sense this was going to happen because when you're kicking with that much wind, you almost think it's going to go out of the end zone. And then I think it, as a Marshall player, you're thinking that as well. Then all at once, boom, he's coming out with it. And you make a couple of blocks, you have a good return, man. You're going to get up near the 50. Nice job by TU especially. 
So TU in business from the 44 yard line, first and 10 leading seven to three. The short dump off to Terry on Adams and he's not going anywhere. John Jacobs, the 6'3", 245 pound sophomore defensive end there to make the tackle, the one-on-one -on -one tackle for the Thundering Herd. I was surprised to hear you say that he's a sophomore because that was a heady play by that young man right there. He, he read the technique of the tackle, sensing that a screen was coming, and then he went and made the play. So second down, Golden Hurricane. This time it's Adams. He's got a hole across midfield. His helmet like comes off again. That's the second time tonight, and that's going to be a Golden Hurricane first down. He gets it by about a couple of feet. Also again, going to the right side right here. Look at the guys up front. They take your uh, steps. They push everybody out of the way. And Terrian says, oh, okay. That's a big hole. I think even Mike Wolf would run through that one. You think so? <laughs> I'm pretty slow, coach. Nice pick up Walter Boyd, the guy that switched over from defensive to offensive line this year, one, making one of the key blocks to open up that hole for Terrion Adams. Smith fakes and goes long, throws it up for Marion. He brings it down, and he's brought down inside the five. A first down and goal for the Golden Hurricane. What a play by Brendan Marion. The ball's a little bit underthrown. Excellent read by Paul Smith. They brought the zone blitz. Paul throws away from the zone blitz. He has one-on-one -on -one coverage. Brendan Manor Marion has a one-on-one. -on -one. He throws it up, and he goes up and makes the play. Right here, the ball's a little bit underthrown. Watch number four go back and, and grab the ball and take it away. That's catching the ball. That's just not letting it fall in. He's a junior JUCO transfer, 454 yards receiving, coming in 41.3 yards per catch and four touchdowns. He's definitely the deep threat for the Golden Hurricane. We're the through one here at Chapman Stadium. Homecoming, TU leads at 7-3. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. Bitson and Hill to the top of your screen. Going for Bitson! Touchdown, Tulsa! Good memories right there. Dan Bitson, one of the outstanding wide receivers for the Golden Hurricane in their history. And that was a nice catch. That was a nice that catch. One. Dan's about two hours away from here. He's uh, he's one of the coaches on the Auburn staff, and uh, they're at uh, Fayetteville tonight playing. And understand there's no score there in the first quarter, but uh, you know, everybody remembers the, the story of Dan and, and his accident not far from here, and how he came back from that, what an inspiration he is, and, and an excellent coach, and what, what a night that was. Uh, he is a special young man. And Brennan Marion, the junior, making an outstanding catch, mentioned his average is 41.3. That was a 41-yard pickup on that play, and of course, A.J. Whitmore had the 41-yard return to set him up in great field position on this drive, and he is taking the snap out of the backfield, fakes to Williams, keeps it himself, and is not going to get very far as he's wrapped up at about the four-yard line. Interesting formation right there. Paul Smith in a deep, deep eye. Uh, snap the ball to Whitmore, and then they run the power uh, up the middle. And I don't know if Paul is much, you know, catching too many eyes back there as a running back. I think they pretty well ignored him on that. <laughs> so that'll bring up a second and goal. Hurricane leading seven to three. Smith's going to keep it and lunge forward, and he's going to be brought down just short of the goal line, probably about half a foot from a touchdown for the senior quarterback. Yeah, you have to like that. I mean, the quarterback knows right where the goal line is. He turned it up in there. He showed a lot of courage and, uh, and, and makes it close. He's not gonna get there. Now, of course, I'm gonna say that's really good speed because the ex quarterback and everybody else gonna say he's not real fast, but yeah, he, he almost made it in. Of course, almost. if I'm taking up for quarterbacks, I should be saying he was in. Yeah. Almost thought he could have maybe made it if he'd have gone out right as he sneaks it here on third and goal, and it's a team the touchdown. There the Paul hands. Smith gets across, and the Golden Hurricane take a 13-3 lead. Just a minute 
14 into the second quarter. Safe call, best call right there to play the, to uh, make the quarterback sneak go. And uh, Paul just slides off his offensive lineman and goes right in the end zone. And the uh, head linesman has to run in there and make sure that he has the ball. And then he calls the touchdown. Nice drive right there by Tulsa. And Tracy in for the extra point. It's up. And it's good. And so the Golden Hurricane on a homecoming Saturday night, a beautiful night for football. Lead it over the thundering herd, 14 to three with 13, 49 to go here in the first half. We're gonna take a timeout. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. back at Chapman Stadium, homecoming for the Golden Hurricane, and they lead the thundering herd of Marshall. Paul Smith sneaks in for a short touchdown to make it 14 to three. Special teams, special teams set up the short drive. Everybody that plays offense loves 55 yard drives. <laughs> you know, you, the, the odds say sometimes the offense you can't put nine and ten plays together. So the more you can have four and five play drives, the better percentages are you're going to score points. Tulsa took advantage of it. Morado set the kick it. And it's Emmanuel Span who drops it, picks it back up inside his own five, and he's going to be swarmed and tackled inside the ten as the Golden Hurricane Randy Duncan gets down there quickly to help make the tackle. Special team, special team that come to play tonight. Excellent job right there. Now it does help the young man to drop the ball. The Tulsa was down there in uh, plenty of time. They were going to make the play around the 20 anyway. The uh, drop ball gives them a little more time. Now you make the play on the 10. That drive by TU, six plays and 56 yards. Two minutes, 44 seconds off the clock. Well, there was a penalty right there. I just saw it. Mary a flag on the field. It's my bad, Mike. The Tulsa being penalized five yards. Must have been offsides. And we're going to do this again. They do have the wind at their back now, which, you know, moving them back to the 30-yard line, I think, is a great move for yes. college football. Like it certainly that. opens up like the return that. game. Uh, but when you do have as much wind at their back as they do, Gerardo may be able to get it back at least to about the five or 10-yard line. Right now, the way it's blowing, you think you just put it up high and you're just carrying the jet stream. So Marshall and Span back deep for the Thundering Herd coming into this ball game 0 in 5 on the season. Kick is good and Span drops it again, picks it up at about the 11 as Marshall in front of him gets across the 30 to about the 33, make it the 34 yard line. And that's where the Thundering Herd offense will take over trailing 14 to three. A five yard penalty turns into a 23 yard differential. Uh, go figure that. Here's that drive that led to the TU touchdown as Terry on Adams, another big run across the middle, his helmet comes off for the second time of the night and the big pass the 41 yarder to Brennan Marion right on his average six plays 56 yards 244 capped by the Paul Smith sneak for the touchdown from the 32 make it the 33 handoff to Darius Marshall and he gets across the 35 to about the 37 yard line we'll call it a gain of four on the play. Hey, Mike, I like the way Tulsa's playing their leverage and playing their gaps tonight. They, they, they are beating Marshall many times to the point of attack. And if you can do that time and time again with your defensive front, then you'll play good defense. Right now, Tulsa's playing good defense. Just a field goal thus far for the Thundering Herd. They've got it second down at about the 36. Marshall has the football, gets across the 40 to the 41, and they've got a yellow hanky on the field. This is gonna be, this is gonna be very interesting. The late flag, you would think they were gonna mark Tulsa off sides, but they sure look like they're okay. There's no flag on the play. Okay. 
to make sense. Now, we have third down, Mike. And I'm not saying this is going to change your season or anything like that, but if, if Tulsa would hold them right here, they're, they're, their confidence skyrockets right now. Oh, yeah. It'll be third and two from the 41. Referee Steve Bart, the instruction to reset the game clock. And it's running with 12.45 to go here in the first half. Morris rolls to his right, passes, tipped up, and falls down. Moten Hopkins, the closest Golden Hurricane to the football. It falls incomplete, and that will bring up a fourth down on the play. Anthony Germany in there again to make the deflection. Nice job by the Tulsa defense to come in and have the three and out. Uh, Marshall goes unbalanced. They're going to sprint out and try to just hit the short pass in the flat. Get that big mid on the ball, knock it up. Give yourself a chance for the pit. Germany really has been in there close to the line of scrimmage and in the backfield all night so far for TU. Kick is high and short. Boy, and that wind bringing it back. Fair catch made by Davis at the 37-yard line, a 22-yard kick. And the Golden Hurricane will take over first and 10 with 12. 31 to go here in the half. It's hard to see with the camera, but from our vantage point, that, that punt took off like, hey, that's going to be a nice punt, and then boom, it just hit a wall right in midair. Rod Thompson down on the sidelines with more. Rod? Hey, guys, the wind is blowing extremely hard. We continue to talk about that. Now to be interested to see how Paul Smith does with this offensive line. They've been getting a lot of credit. They have really been the story of this first and second half, I mean, first uh, quarter and second quarter. As you take a look right here, that offensive line has really had their way, getting a lot of praise from the coaching staff here and also the defense. I believe Coach Rader touched on it. To be able to stop Marshall, only give them three points was really something they wanted to focus and do. The Marshall kicked the field goal. You should have seen him really congratulating the defense Tell them to keep them out of the end zone. They've been able to do the job, but the win is playing a factor. Back up to you. All right, thank you, Rod. Charles Clay on the reception, and a nice pickup for the Golden Hurricane. Gets him on the thundering herd side of the field. Smith fires to Clay again. He's going to get across the 35, across the 30-yard line before he's brought down by a trio of Marshall defenders, but another nice pickup for the freshman, the true freshman, Charles Clay. Can't say enough about the big guys up front. Watch 76, 65, all the guys up there. They have, they give the time to Paul to pump, reset, find his third outlet, and bring it down to the big running back, and then he makes something happen. Nice play by all 11 guys. He came into this game with 283 receiving yards on 20 catches, also has 175 yards on the ground. First down TU from the 26. Smith has time, throws it up, and throws it away. Smart, make it second down. Smart right there. There, there was nothing. Excellent job by Marshall. Had everything covered. Paul was going to improvise, try to make something happen. There was nothing going on. Pull the ball out of bounds. Let's go to second and 10 and fill the next play. TU leading it 14 to 3 and driving once again with more at quarterback. Three receivers to the left, two to the right. Play is in motion. Whitmore on the keeper. And it's going to pick up a couple before he is brought down by Mario Harvey, the six foot, 220 pound sophomore for the Thundering Herd. Mario Harvey was not fooled whatsoever. He stayed at home and he made the big hit right there. Paul Smith was on the field for that play, lined up wide. He's back in to take the snap in the shotgun on third and five from the Marshall 21 yard line. Third play tells us goal, man. Smith fires to Adams. He's got plenty of field. Makes a nice oh, move. Cool. And he's in for the Golden Hurricane touchdown. Terry on Adams, his second score of the night. Beautiful, Mike. 
Tulsa had not come to the bench in a while with the hard count and, th and then come with the play. This time they did. They went with the hard count, came to the bench once, came to the bench twice, and this must have been the play that Gus Malzahn wanted because this guy is wide open. You'll see it often, but that guy was wide open. Ashton Hall looked like he might be in position to make the tackle, and he was just fake, clean out of his shoes as the extra point is up and good. And with 10.47 to go here in the first half, Tulsa's tacked on another touchdown, and they lead the thundering herd 21-3 on a homecoming Saturday night here at Chapman Stadium. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. Welcome back to Chapman Stadium. Golden Hurricane leading it 21 to three as Terry Adams fakes out Ashton Hall and cruises to pay dirt for his second touchdown of the ball game. TU leading it 21 to three. Another nice drive, another nice short drive. You know, uh, again, the special teams are really playing a part. Sometimes you can see special teams are right now they're playing behind the scenes, setting up short drives for Tulsa. Tulsa's taking advantage of it. If they, they can continue to do that all night, then the special teams will play the difference in this game and will really give the, uh, the, the Tulsa not only an advantage, but a buffer where mistakes won't hurt them so much if they are inclined to make mistakes uh, later on. Right now with the 21 to three lead, you know, as a coach, you're liking that, but that's not that much of a buffer. You get one more and then you feel real good about anything going wrong and you, you know you can come back and correct 10 47 to go in the half as paul Hirado boots it, it go. and emmanuel span will refield it at about the seven yard line gets across the 20 some running room before he's popped and dropped at about the 28 yard line and that was randy duncan there to make the tackle for the golden hurricane hard to teach youngsters and an excellent kick by the by Tulsa there, but it's hard to teach youngsters that when you're that close to silent, let it let it go. Let it go, because you're, you're going to make more yards by letting it go than you are trying to return. Yeah, if it takes a bounce, it goes out at the third, and uh, you've got the ball at the 35. He did get a nice return in this case, but more times than not, you let that go, and you're going to end up better off. Morris brings the offense to the field. First and 10 from the 24-yard line. His thundering herd trailing 21 to three as he throws it into the turf, incomplete. And that'll bring up second and 10 for Marshall. Good thing it was incomplete. If he's gonna have caught that, they'd been like second and 12 on that. Marshall's trying most everything right now. They, they're, they're trying to find a groove. They're trying to find something to put together a couple of first downs. Whatever they're trying right now, Tulsa has an answer. Okay, this this is what Tulsa's been looking for all year long for their defense. Right now, they have it going. Second down from the 29. Morris fires. He's got a man across midfield. A first down. That's Emmanuel Span. And that'll be a Marshall first down at the TU 49 yard line. Again, a nice job of Marshall picking up the blitz here. Uh, the Golden Herd bring, came bring more than four on this. They're trying to put pressure on uh, Bernard Morris and it gives him a lot of time. He sets his feet and then to compound that, uh, Davis uh, falls down as he's uh, chasing the receiver across the field. All those things add up to a big game. 22 yard pickup for Marshall first down on the Golden Hurricane side of the football field. Morris has time, fires again to the sideline, and it is nearly intercepted by Charles Davis. And if it had been, he oh was heading my. to the house. Oh my, don't you know he wants another opportunity like that? That just doesn't happen too often. Right behind the quarterback, watch the break by Charles right here. He's right there, hits him. I guess he hit him in a bad spot, right? Hit him in the chest. And you know he wants another one like that. I think he was looking downfield. I really think he saw the end zone and <laughs> thought he was going to make it there. He had a clear shot to really put this one in great shape for the Golden Hurricane, but not looking too shabby right now, up 21 to 3. Morris flushed out of the pocket. He's going to run it. He can run. He does. 
and he's going to pick up a large chunk of chains before he's brought down at the 12 yard line and he came into this game with 136 yards and tacks on 37 more on that play. Tulsa's done such an excellent job all night. No big plays, no big plays. And, and then who would have thought that here with the three-man rush, the quarterback would put down and catch everybody napping and then make the 37-yard game. Nice job of that young man. He, he, he is, you know, he, he's a weapon for him right there. Tell you what opened up that play is Looks like Alan Karatapian and down on the field for TU was uh, Nelson Coleman was covering Cody right. Slate and he came across on the crossing pattern, took Coleman out of the play and that opened up that middle for just turned for, his uh, back Morris. just for an instant. Yeah. And then the, the quarterback was right behind him. Morris showed some speed there, did he not, Mike? Pull it down, turned it on, and then he has some long legs and it made a nice game for him. Now, he didn't score. So as a Tulsa defender, you say, we didn't let him in the end zone. Let's, let's don't let him in the end zone again. We gave up a big play. Let's, let's hold him out. A reminder, you can catch Sports Night Oklahoma weeknights at 10 o'clock right here on the Cox Channel. More than just headlines, more than just scores. It's the sports stories you won't see anywhere else. Sports Night Oklahoma, Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. on the Cox Channel. It's a good show. A 10 o'clock show. Fun show. It is. A lot of fun. I act like you have a I am. <laughs> it's good. I like those shows. 12 yard line. First and 10 for the Thundering Herd as they try to get into the end zone. Pass is caught and then dropped. They're going to call it incomplete. Darius Marshall, maybe he was looking ahead before he uh, got full uh, possession. Well, I, I think he was, Mike, but, and then the ball was a little short and a little low, and, and, and then that caused you not to make the catch. If the ball had been right in his belly, he might turn the corner and, you know, get real close to the end zone right there. But, again, it's a game of inches. Things drop. Sets up second and 10. Crowd's getting into it. Should be the noisier part of the stadium down on the south end. Mm -hmm. Inside handoff oh to Chubb, my. small, big hole, and that's a 12-yard touchdown for the Thundering Herd. Nice drive from Marshall. Chubb Small, a 5'9", 200-pound junior, and nobody touched him as he could have walked right into the end zone. And looked like it may be as a miscommunication. It looked like uh, one of the defenders came down inside, and another defender did not follow him, but went outside, causing a huge gap there. You, you really don't want that to happen. Anthony Benswanger on for the extra point as Marshall tries to pull within 11 with 9.24 to go here in the first half. Kick is up, and it's good. TU ahead 21-10 over the thundering herd. Second quarter play here at Chapman Stadium. Just when we talked about the success and the confidence builder of the defense, right. the nice drive by the visitors. Excellent drive right there, and all set up by number 14. He's the key to their offense, much like number 12 is the key to the Tulsa offense, but when he pulled it down, made the 37-yard run, you, know, you take a lot of plays away from your offense. You set it, you set it up, you, you go to the plus territory, and right now, Marshall scores on a high percentage plus territory, and unfortunately, Tulsa has given up a lot of points in the red territory, in the red zone, uh, on like a, a, over an 80% uh, opportunity for the opponents to score in Tulsa in the red zone. Here's the scoring drive for the Thundering Herd. The pass there to Span for the nice pickup across midfield, and, and in the big run as the pocket opens up. See Coleman flushed out defensively. Six plays, 71 yards, took up just 123. And Chubb Small came into this game with a little turf toe. He looks smooth on Very the turf there. there isn't it? Thundering Herd gets their first touchdown of the night and trail it 21 to 10. A reminder coming up at halftime, TU Athletic Director Bubba Cunningham will join us. Also, head men's basketball coach Doug Wojcik about set to tip off his third season coming off a 20-win season 
of last year. All right, Trey Johnson from the 18-yard line has a little bit of room across the 30 to about the 31-yard line. And Mark Snyder in his third season, and really, Dave, this thundering hurt uh, defense has really been plagued by injuries. Last year, the defensive player of the year in the conference, Albert McClellan, out for the season with a torn ACL. Montel Glasgow, defensive tackle, out for the year. John Jacobs, who's back on the field tonight, he missed three games with a broken hand. So when you lose key guys like that, no matter who you are and how talented your defense is, it's certainly going to create holes and certainly create opportunities for opposing offenses. You're exactly right. The game is about personnel. You know, because there's so much coverage in football anymore, you hear a lot of talk about schemes. And this coach does this, this coach does that. But it really doesn't matter what your X and you know, I mean, If you have better X and O's on the field, you, you have a better chance of winning. And when you lose some of your key people, it puts you, you know, in a deficit in trying to win ball games. But now, I, I tell you what, you don't learn a lot about the character of a team right there because they were down and they're on the road. It's a beautiful evening. Hadn't won a game, but yet they came back and scored a touchdown. Now, you know, Coach Snyder has to like that. Now, the Tulsa fan has seen all year long the mm -hmm. Tulsa offense respond time and time again to that. They come back and score points to negate what the opposing team did. Now, can they do it again? We will find out shortly as they'll re-kick it on the offsides penalty, and they're going to squib it. And TU is going to down it. Mike Bryan, the sophomore, the smart play. Yep. Especially with the cast on his hand. Did what he was coached there. There's a look at Terry on Adams the night he is having so far for the Golden Hurricane. Just running strong and running with authority. Yep. Stiff Run, arm there. Running with vision. He runs, he runs forward, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Tough kid. Of course, getting a lot more carries with Courtney Tennille out for the season and certainly taking advantage and doing a lot of positive things for the Hurricane offense. They'll start at first and 10 from the 38, and there's Adams. Just runs right yeah. over the defender. And nice run. Good job by the left side. One of the few times Tulsa's run left. C.J. Spillman there to make the tackle. Brings up the second down and two. Under nine minutes to go here in the half. TU looking to answer after Marshall gets their touchdown to cut the deficit, their deficit to 21-10. Deion Tolliver in motion, fake to him, fire to Adams. He gets across midfield, he'll drag the tackler a couple more yards before he is brought down. But not before picking up a Golden Hurricane first down. Nice release for Paul Smith. He has people coming at him. He knows the exact time when to release the ball. And then he puts it they're in that manner where the running back can turn up and make somebody miss instead of just being tackled as soon as he catches the ball. First down from the 46. Smith fires. He's got a man open. It's Clay across the 10 to about the seven yard line before he's brought down. Just another outstanding play call by offensive coordinator right. Gus Malzahn to get Clay in the open field, and exactly right. he gets those yak, those all-important yak yards after the catch. This offense just sets guys guys up, and, and they're just so wide open. You know, Paul Smith is excellent, but Mike, I think you could have hit him too. I mean, that was an excellent call, excellent scheme. First and goal from the six. Adams with it across the five to about the three. They called on Whaley Puckett, Morsi again. These guys are having the push up front. They had a chance, said, hey, we'll, we'll score right behind you. And, and, and they made good on it. Three yard gain, was it? Yes, sir. 
Bring out the second and goal from the three. Hand off to Adams again. Powell pushed back just a little bit. They're going to spot it. Oh, between the two and the one yard line, looks like. They make a yard and a half there. They're gaining on it again. Uh, I need to, to bring out Way Whitlow's name and Roderick Thomas's name. They're, they're part of that bunch up there, but Tulsa has so much confidence right now and just went inside the five yard line, just run behind those big guys. Third and goal. Paul Smith, 11 of 19 for 173 so far tonight. We'll see that off. That one's going to fall incomplete. What are you going to do? Fourth down. You know, you're up by 11. If you kick the field goal, you're up two touchdowns. Right. If you're conservative, that's what you do. Right. Take the two touchdowns. Probably lead. the thing to do. Yep. Paul Smith here again right before he's hit. Oh, the ball was deflected. Okay. We, didn't, we couldn't see that from up here. All right. Nice job by the Marshall defender. Good call here by Coach Graham. 19 yard attempt for Jared Tracy. Kick is up and it is good. And TU forges a 14 point lead on a homecoming Saturday. It's 24 10, 6.32 to go here in the half at Chapman Stadium. You're watching Golden Hurricane Football on the Cox Channel. We're back at Chapman Stadium, homecoming for the Golden Hurricane, leading the thundering herd of Marshall 24 to 10 here in the second quarter. And Coach Radel, let's take a look at that drive one more time as Terry Ion was a big part of it once again. Well, you, you know, coach is going to use their best players and give them the ball. You have to, every drive, you, you have to give it to two fives. And then do things to uh, get the ball to the guys that are good, but maybe they don't watch as much. And that's exactly what Coach Malzahn is doing right now. You get close, don't punch it in, let you respond to the touchdown with three points. You have a two touchdown lead. You still feel good about what you're doing offensively. Seven plays, 60 yards, chewed up two minutes and 52 seconds of clock time and gave TU a 24 to 10 lead over Marshall. The kick fielded by Span at the four. He is tackled at about the 19 yard line. And that is where the thundering herd will take over. First and 10, Ty Page, the six foot two, 220 pound junior, making the tackle for TU. Nice play right there, but Ty Page nails Marshall inside the 20, 25 second clock is running without Marshall on the field. Tulsa defense needs to respond right here. Three and out would be great, but just no points. Last time Marshall had the football, they drove it down and scored. Hand off to Passmore. He's across the 20 to about the 25 yard line. Hit hard by Charles Davis and Randy Duncan and Duncan a little bit shaken up as he gets up off the turf. And it was quite a collision right there. A nice job of Duncan to come up and, and make the play that he made. I think he's feeling it right now, but uh, that's, that's the way to get the line of scrimmage and, and make a play right there, young man. They pick up, pick up six. six. As we go under six minutes here in quarter number two. Roberts is covering pass more again. I know Coach Snyder wanted to throw the deep ball coming in, but they really haven't gone downfield very much tonight, and you got to credit the TU guys up front for putting pressure on Morris so far, so good all night. Sure do, right there, just a little uh, just a little hitch pattern right in front of Roy Roberts, and, and, uh, and you know, this is going to be quite a battle all night long, 10 on 88 right there. And you just don't want to give up the long one, and, and, and I'm sure Roy's filling him out as he has been the whole first half, uh, but it, it's a good battle right now. It's good to see 10 back out on the field, isn't it? Dan Karatapian, who was shaken up a little bit earlier, also on the field as well for TU. 31 yard line, the line of scrimmage, first and 10, thundering herd, trailing 24 to 10. 
Morris keeps it and pitches. And that is past Moore again. Another helmet flies off. This time it's Steve Craver's hard hat hitting the turf. We've had some chin strap work tonight, haven't we? Yeah. Another way for pass more to have the ball. I mean, give Marshall credit. They're finding ways for 88 to touch it because their passing game just, you know, isn't clicking a whole lot. And plus, you're going into the stiff breeze. We've talked about this breeze quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, how, how, how can we get it to 88? Well, let's hand it off to him because it's really hard to throw it to him sometimes in this game. Marshall, of course, a, a couple of uh, famous alums in the NFL. Chad Pennington with the Jets. There's one. And Randy Moss, who's having an outstanding season he is. in his first year with the Patriots, who at 5-0 and visit Dallas tomorrow. The Cowboys 5-0, and which Boy, should be, be a good a one. Game there, one. Yeah. Man. From, Go ahead. From the 40, second down, and the handoff to Darius Marshall. He gets across midfield. Duncan chasing and is going to finally pull him out of bounds. And they're going to spot it at about the 36. I'd like to see this play again. And hopefully we can because Tulsa, Tulsa blitz right at the point of attack, and somebody just had to run right by it. And that's right. I had two guys in, in the same gap. When you have two people in the same gap, that leaves the gap open. And you know where the running back always goes, Mike? Where the gap is. Where the gap is. So Marshall picks up 25 on the play. First down, thundering herd, as their offense really has been very productive on the last two drives. <laughs> Hand off Chubb Small. He gets through the opening defensive line and gets down to about the 10 yard line. <laughs> What? That was a nice move with Jeff Small to put on the free safety right there. First down. Charles Davis finally there to bring him down, but again, following his blockers right up the middle of the field. Nice move right there. Good hustle by Charles Davis. Saved the touchdown. Now, the tension down. No chance for a first down. Give three or four downs to score you. First and goal, Marshall trailing 24 to 10. They go back to the well again. It's Darius Marshall, and he has stood up and knocked out of bounds at the one. Flags on the play. What is going on on the inside now? I, I don't know if it's holding a chop block or whatever, but it should go against the white shirts. Holding number 16 on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Boy, First down. that's just going to take off uh, Coach Snyder, isn't it? But right in the middle, you see right there, they're just pulling guys down, and that, that was a call. And look at Chris Chamberlain, Chris Chamberlain just right stood him up. Stood him up and oh. just drove him out. Of, denied him in the end zone. What a play by that young man right there. Man, you, uh, you just have to look watching him play, don't you? Oh, he's fun to watch. Seems to be, if he's not in every play, certainly around the football almost every play. So Marshall backed up 10. It's first and goal now from the 20. Morris with time is going to tuck and run. He's got a little field in front. Gets back inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Chased out of bounds there by the Golden Hurricane. Nice job by Bernard Morris. I mean, it's a one-man show right now. Tulsa has everybody covered. They have the second and third outlets covered. There's not a whole lot of room for him to run, but he finds a little bit of an opening and makes the most of a nice job at number 14. So Morris gets him back inside the 10. Third and goal. He's going to hand it off. And they're going to get to about the five. It's Darius Marshall. Tulsa knows what they're going to run. They, they continue to blitz right at the point of attack. And they have a lot of blue shirts in there. It should, it should be difficult to run that. It's good call, good game plan right there. So it brings up a fourth down from the four. The Thundering Herd going for it. Make that third down. That's right, they had the holding call earlier. Crowd can make a difference here. Morris under center for this one. Going to throw the fade. He's got a man open and a touchdown 
for the Thundering Herd. And that is Sean Lazan. Nice, nice throw by Morris right here. Sets up, sets his feet. Not too much loft on the ball, not too short. Timing was just as it needed to be, and Tulsa just couldn't get there in time to, to knock it down. Was on a big target at six foot six, 204. He's a senior, got to the open spot, and Morris put it where either it was going to be a touchdown or an incompletion. Who holds for the kicker? Span. He returns kickoffs and he holds for the kicker. How about that? Very versatile fella. Ben Swanger puts it through the uprights. And TU's lead now just seven. As Sean Lazan gets into the end zone. It's 24-17 with 3.09 to go here in the first half. And Dave, we talked about the defense and how they held him to a field goal and back-to-back -back drives now. The Thundering Herd have marched right downfield and put it in the zone. It's like Marshall has something figured out right now. You know what I mean? Like they, they were playing around. They were, they were doing this, doing that. And then, boom, they have something figured out. And again, the big plays have, 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 have made an impact on the game right now. And they're usually set up by number 14 right now. Tulsa is going to have to somehow have him off the spot. And then when you get him off the spot, tap him and not let him make those big plays. There's a new show on the Cox Channel lineup Monday through Friday. Catch back-to-back -back episodes of number one, Dream of Genie, starting Barbara Eden and Larry Hagman as Major Nelson. Oklahoma's Cox Channel is your place to catch some of your favorite shows from the past. You don't remember that show, do you? I do, actually. Do you? And that Larry Hagman, of course, uh, who shot Jr. Spent some time. He was down. actually nice in that show. In in, in Dry Dream of Genie. Right. Yeah. And something happened. You know. His alter ego showed up he in did. Dallas. Big time. I guess you know when you lose your genie. <laughs> who thinks you? And Mike Bryan falls on it again at about the 32-yard line. That's where the Golden Hurricane offense will take over. This is when you really, really like to have Paul Smith in your team. And he, things just aren't you, just not going your way, and now you have your senior quarterback to, to come back from the, the scoring drive that Marshall had. Big play right there. Again, two guys in the same gap. Causes a long run. Mark nice move. Yeah, Marshall and Small doing most of the running on that drive, and of course the touchdown capping the eight play, 81 yard drive in 323 to make it a seven point game. And that's Trey Johnson with the football. He's knocked out of bounds at the 39, pick up of about seven on the play. Nice job of Trey, but how about number five, six? How about big Walter Ward out there leading the way? Look at this, look at the big man out there. Has a long way for him to run now. He had to have some water to get back to the huddle. <laughs> big fella. Providing some space there on the left side of the field. Young man cramping, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Ashton Halsey jogs off the field right there. It looks like his calves are cramping, and it? it is a little warm tonight. Beautiful right now, though. Couldn't ask for better no. conditions. Second and three for TU. As they look to the sidelines. Change up the play call. Smith hands it off, and there's nowhere to go for Charles Clay. Charles He's Clay. brought down by a couple of guys. First there, Ian Hoskins, and then John Jacobs there to finish off the tackle. What a play by Ian Hoskins. It's like played. he was in the huddle. There wasn't he, he a was, huddle, but yeah. <laughs> he played his leverage and, and just kept pushing and pushing, and, and the running back had nowhere to go. And then he said, "Hey, I'll just go ahead and tackle you right back." To you back to the 28. Going to bring up a third and long. Got to get across the 42-yard line for a first down. Smith with time fires a strike and that will be a first down caught there by Jesse Meyer at the 47. How about the protection on this? Watch, watch Paul Smith right here. He's going to look one, two, three, 
three clicks of his heel, and then he's going to drive the ball into the receiver. Nice job up front. That's what made it happen right there. Meyer had seven catches for 114 and his first career touchdown against the Sooners, becoming more and more of a target. Of course, Paul Smith has more targets this season than he's had the previous three. It, and they really hadn't called on him a whole lot tonight. So, so, so many of the uh, catches have been made by the backs. Here's Paul tonight. The live cut. Pump. Throws it deep. Marion comes back and makes a nice play right here for him. That was into the wind. That was in the wind. And then right here. For touch sanitarium right there. Tulsa takes a timeout right there to stop the clock. You know, there was some talk last week and went to take the timeout and went not to. It felt like right there was the time to take it, regroup, and let's get a play. We'll see what Coach Malzahn has after that timeout. You see Paul's numbers. He has five straight 300-yard passing games and only 101 short of doing it again tonight. Pass over the middle, caught at midfield, and brought down at the 40 is Terion Adams. And that's another Golden Hurricane first down as we go under two minutes here in the first half. This young man is so sharp. Tulsa's trying to go downfield. They had the vertical stretch on here. Marshall's ready for it, take it away, but they forget about 2-5. And Paul just drops it down. Big game, first down. The fake to Clay. Smith for the open man. That's Meyer again. Nice pickup. He's brought down at about the 26 yard line by number 26, Aaron Johnson. The corner went for the pick. Should have gone for the blow. And as you see right here, the receiver is going to come right in front of the corner. The corner thinks he's going to make the pick. And boom, no, I'm going to take the ball right here. First down for Tulsa. Nice job. Meyer using his size and his hands to bring that one down. The snap to Whitmore, he's got some room across the 15, but a flag on the play, and that one might be coming back. Boy, this would be crucial right here to bring this thing back 10 yards. Number 70, 53 on offense. 10-yard penalty, first down. Justin Morsey, the guard, flagged for the holding call there. It must have been uh, quite flagrant because there were two hankies on that one, not just the, you know, the, the one. They throw two of them on that one. So that'll make it first and 20 and back the hurricane up to the 36. Whitmore again takes the snap and he is dropped right around the line of scrimmage. Tried the same thing, only different. Much different result this time. TU is going to call a timeout. That's their second of the first half. We're leaving them with one, with 1.14 to go here in the second quarter, leading 24 to 17. And now we're in second and long. So you're going to, Coach Malzahn is going to look at his list. He's going to check that second and long list. He's going to flip the page over and say, not too many plays on second and long. Okay, fellas, here's what we're going to do. And we just need to have a somewhat of a good gain right here. We don't have to make it all right now. Let's just see what we can do. Let's set it down as it, so we can make a decision on third down here and, and pick up the first down in two chunks right now. If we don't, let's get close enough, set up that field goal, have a lot of momentum ahead. Forget to get your or set your DVR for the game. No worries. Cox has you covered with on demand. All you have to do is hit the on demand button on your remote and select channel one go to cox local and find all the high school football games we've done this season on demand another reason more customers choose cox as their entertainment provider paul smith back in fires and meyer again past the first down marker and he's going to be dragged out of bounds standing at the 11 yard line another fine throw to jesse meyer there's no way Watching, watching this, th this ball is not going to make it. I'm saying, no, Paul, don't throw this one. Don't throw this one. And somehow he zips it in there and finds the eye of the needle. 
and what a catch right there with Jesse Myers twisting his body, coming back and making that play. That ball had to be thrown there or it was going to be picked. What a play by those two young men. Meyer is 6'4", 201 pounder out of Jinx. Big play there to get the Hurricane down to the 11 yard line. Smith fires left. Too long. Intended for Trey Johnson incomplete. And that'll bring up a second and 10 with 101 to go here in the half. They get Marshall when they been on defense and on the red zone. They have given up 96% of the time some type of score, and seven out of 10 times they give up the touchdown. Tulsa needs to capitalize on those percentages and hold them through. Well, Marshall certainly has the momentum thus far until you really need to punch it in here and, and head into the half with a with more than a seven point advantage. Probably give it to 25 right here. Five on the play clock to Smith. Takes the snap. Buying some time. Under pressure. Fires. He's wide open. And wide open is Trey Johnson. Touchdown, Golden Hurricane. 11 yards. Smith to 83. Trey Johnson. What a play by number 12. And he brings the flag on top of it. What vision he has. I'm telling you. There was nothing happening in that play. Marshall was playing for the pass. They took the pass away. Paul's looking. He's looking. There's nobody out there. Oh, one more glance. Oh, okay. I got it to you. Boy, and Trey nice Johnson job. just loses the secondary. Nice job right there. Cameron Clemens, discipline, held his spot. He knew number 12 was going to find him, and find him he did. And the kick is up and good. So with 53 seconds to go here in half number one, the Golden Hurricane rebuild their advantage to two touchdowns, leading it 31-17. We're going to look at that touchdown one more time as Paul Smith buys some time and ends up with a touchdown pass. He chased around and glances right at the back of the end zone. This one stand where he should be. I'll tell you what, this is what we talked about in our pregame talk, Mike. This quarterback and these receivers are on the same page. When they are, this offense clicks. It's, it's, a, it's, it's beautiful to see. And when it works like that, you sit back and say, well, it looks so easy. Why can't you do that all the time? I mean, you make it look that way. You know, I was going to ask you, Coach, so many offenses today are no huddle or the plays are coming in from the sideline signals. you got a, a guy with fake right. signals. Um, it would seem like guys would get crossed up more than they do but yeah. with 11 guys out there, but it doesn't seem to happen very much. Well, it, there's really no difference what you're doing in the huddle. I mean, it's, it's, you're going to talk and call the play out sometimes. So what no huddle teams do, they just call out the play while everybody's at the line of scrimmage. So you're really doing the same thing. It's just in front of everybody. So with the penalty, the kick out of the end zone, and Marshall will take over at the 20, trailing by two touchdowns and 53 seconds to go. And three timeouts. So that length, you know, that, gives, that has a chance to give you more plays. And Tulsa just, you know, there's just no way to give up the big play. You know, now you just can't have that happen. You have a lot of momentum. You know, huge drive right there by the offense. Now, just, just shut them down. Let's go, go in the locker room. Let's talk about it and say you play well. Morris under center from the 20. Going to hand off to Marshall. Karatapian. Interesting. And a couple other Hurricane players there to bring him down. Steve Craver there as well. Nelson Coleman also helping to make the tackle. The Golden Hurricane defense. Well, you, you would think that the Marshall would be a little more aggressive right now. At least, again, they had three timeouts. They had 53 seconds. They could run up to six or seven plays with that. And it looks like they're just going to allow the clock to run out. Well, you know, they do get the ball to start the second half. And you'd think down two touchdowns, why not, you know, at least try a couple of big plays. And if you don't score, then then maybe sit on it and, yep. and head to the half down 14. Instead, they're just going to sit on it and head to the half down by 14. 
So it's halftime at Chapman Stadium, homecoming on the TU campus. The Golden Hurricane leading the thundering herd of Marshall, 31 to 17. Coming up at the half, a visit with TU Athletic Director Bubba Cunningham. We'll also visit with Head Men's Basketball Coach Doug Wojcik. It's halftime at Chapman Stadium. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. Athletic Director Bubba Cunningham with us here at halftime of the Golden Hurricane homecoming game against Marshall University out of Huntington, West Virginia. And Bubba, uh, first off, I know a lot goes into preparations for homecoming 2007 comes to fruition today. It really does, and homecoming is a great week. You know, we have we, we paint the street on Wednesday, bonfire on Thursday, we had great dinner last night, and obviously the culmination of the game on Saturday. You've had BYU in, OU in, UAB in, uh, now Marshall. What's been the general consensus as far as feedback goes about the Case Athletic Complex that's in that end zone? Well, more and more people are saying, I saw it on television, and then they get here and they say, it's nicer than we thought. And when they get the tour of the Case Building and see kind of the pictorial history of the football program, and then when they see the suites that open up, and you, you know, we've had extra points go into the suites right. up there. They're so close to the field, they're just very impressed by that building. And then they say, oh, and you're gonna do the rest of the stadium and tie it into this, that that'll be fabulous. So it, the reception has been terrific. And what a great opportunity for those maybe players or alumni that has, haven't got to see the facility, get to come back today and see it in person. Homecoming is the time we welcome people back, but Todd has been welcoming people back mm -hmm. throughout the summer and all year long. So we have had Letterman both in the uh, game day suite and in the locker room all year. So this homecoming is really special because we have even more people feeling a part of the program. When you came to TU as athletic director, I know you, you have ideas and, and challenges and you try to put your finger on it, several different things. What was the biggest challenge you face and what do you feel like has been your biggest accomplishment to date? Well, I think what I walked into was a great set of coaches, and the coaches have recruited outstanding student athletes. And there's very few times in an organization where the president, the board, the community are all in alignment philosophically and strategically, and I feel like that's where we are right now. So the construction of the case building, the momentum for the stadium, the university's transforma transformation of the campus with the apartments, it's just I feel very fortunate to be a part of it. And so really, the, the best thing is I haven't screwed it up yet. <laughs> Steve. Cragthorpe had so much success with the football program, obviously playing today. Coach Graham came in. Was that as smooth a transition as it could have been when you bring in a new head coach? It really was. You know, Todd was here with Steve. They really breathed life back into the program. Three of the four classes that are playing now were recruited by Todd and Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, he was only gone for one year, so getting him back, it was a very smooth transition. But anytime there's a, a new person in charge, they do things differently. So we've had some differences, but overall it's been terrific. Besides the familiarity that, that Coach Graham brought, what was it about him that, that I guess made you guys as a staff target him and say, we would like to bring him back to the University of Tulsa? His passion, his commitment to the university, his commitment to the area, his commitment to, to these kids. You know, I think you, there have been some articles in the paper recently about his past and about his family, and all of those things fit so well with the university. And he had a three-year interview while he was here, so we really yeah. knew what we were getting. Talk about the success, not only of football, but Doug Wojcik in his first season won 11 games, 20 last year. Uh, talked to us uh, earlier this week on our show about the fact that for the first time since he's been there, freshmen, he's not depending on freshmen. They may contribute, but he's not dependent on those guys. Uh, talk about the basketball program in particular, and obviously Charlene Thomas Swinson took, uh, took them to a Conference USA title her first year. Well, Doug and Charlene have done terrific jobs. You know, basketball started Friday, so we've got, we're into it now, so we're there. And the best thing about a coach saying, I'm not relying on freshmen, means that they've recruited well. So Doug and Charlene both have players in here that they're comfortable with. The players are comfortable with the coaches. You know, I, I, we have a great variety of talent, yeah, particularly on Doug's team with a, an outstanding point guard in Ben, a seven-footer in Jerome. Mm -hmm. So we have a great blend of talent. And, you know, Doug, his background as a recruiter is phenomenal. Yeah. And I think we're seeing the fruits of his labor now. But you will see an incredibly tenacious defensive team. And we will score some points. But it's really going to start at the defensive end by creating some turnovers. When I arrived here 11 years ago, 
ago, TU was an independent. Then they joined the WAC, which was 16 teams at the time. Then it pared down to eight, and the Mountain West was formed now in Conference USA uh, for a couple of years now. Talk about the conference affiliation and how Tulsa fits in with the other schools that are involved. Well, conference conferences are dynamic. They've mm -hmm. changed uh, quite a bit in the last 20 years. And, you know, even before that, when you go back to the Missouri Valley, mm -hmm. you know, then the 1A, 1AA thing started. So that's when we got into the WAC. And I think that was a great league for us at the time. But playing in Conference USA in an Eastern time zone against schools that are more similar to us, you know, there's four privates in the uh, in Conference USA. I think those are better schools for us to compete with on a regular basis. Uh, with Memphis in the league, certainly there's an incredible standard. You know, coming out as the number one team preseason, that's a high stretch for everybody in our league, and we need to compete with them. So we're excited about that possibility. When you look at where you are now and looking maybe like five years ahead, where do you see the University of Tulsa athletic programs as a whole heading forward? Well, we want to compete for championships. Mm -hmm. um, we've won four championships each of our first two years mm -hmm. in Conference uh, USA. You know, that needs to be a minimum. And we want to compete for championships in football, basketball, and we want to compete for national championships in golf and tennis. And with the NCAA tennis tournament coming here next spring, that gives us that opportunity. Our thanks to Bubba Cunningham, athletic director for the University of Tulsa, whose Golden Hurricane lead it. 31-17 homecoming here at Chapman Stadium over the thundering herd of Marshall. Back with more here at halftime. You're watching Golden Hurricane Football on the Cox Channel. Marshall 31-17. Let's send it down to the field. Rod Thompson with Coach Todd Graham. Rod. Thanks a lot, guys. Coach Graham, your team up 31-17. What was your assessments of that first half, and what did you tell your team at halftime? Well, you know, too many times we got down the red zone, didn't score touchdowns. We didn't do that. You know, 31 points is a good amount of points to score. But, uh, you know, we, and we gave up, you know, the quarterback running out of the, out of, out of the, uh, the pocket and not getting pressure on him. Uh, we can't give up big plays. Only two scores, and that's nothing right now. So we got to play it like it's zero to zero, and let's go out. And uh, we need to get some takeaways. We had our hands on the ball twice defensively, didn't get those. Uh, we got to do a better job kicking the ball. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. That's Coach Graham right there. He want to improve that second half play. Back up to you, Mike. All right, thank you, Rod. 31-17 at the half. TU continuing to put up big numbers offensively. 31 points in the first half of that offense might be even more productive if senior number 20, Courtney Tennille, was in the lineup. He is out for the year, awaiting word for the NCAA on a possible sixth year of eligibility, and we caught up with the star out of Glenpool earlier this season before TU's matchup with his former team, the Oklahoma Sooners. I was just out here, you know, and wasn't nobody really around me, and uh, just kind of went to start running, and my ankle popped, and fell down and couldn't I couldn't get back up that was a Monday three days later the senior from Glenpool had surgery and after the Hurricanes season opening win at Louisiana Monroe he found out he's out for the season I just look at it as a, I'm still a member of the team you know I still have to you know look out for these guys and uh, I know they still look out for me and that you know I love them and I mean the same it's a brotherhood in this team so um, we just go out and we fight as a team. His presence on the team is still felt, and I think, you know, a lot of credit to him for being able to do that. I don't know if I could do that in his shoes. He's really not taking much time off. He's always around. He's always got a smile on his face, and, you know, th that takes a lot of guts. We can't lose his competitive spirit at practice, and uh, those are the things that he's going to provide. And there's so many things being in uh, the places that he's been and the, the big games that he's been in, you know, just that perspective to those young guys. And uh, he is just has a tremendous way with Charles Clay and Jamad uh, that's, that's really, really special. So we really kept, he's traveling everywhere with, with us just like he's playing. Tennille's experience gives the coaches an extra set of eyes to help the other backs see the field better. That's a huge plus for the Hurricane, and Tennille is happy to provide it. I've been trying to talk to especially a lot of young guys and, uh, you know, let them know how things are on the field and, you know, just keep their, keep their heads in it and, uh, you know, keep their spirits up and things like that and just talk to the rest of the guys on the field and let them know that I'm cheering for them, you know, I'm the number one fan standing on the sideline, you know. Tennille holds the state record yeah, for rushing and led the Warriors Great to the gold ball in 2002. He started his college career in Norman, then transferred to TU, leading the Hurricane with 845 yards on the ground and 14 touchdowns last season. He's a powerful back and was part of a potent one-two punch with Terrion Adams. Tennille worked all spring and summer for a shot at the Sooners, 
an opportunity lost because of the injury. He had so many good relationships there, but at the same time, when you're, when you're playing against a school that you went to, I can you know, imagine that it is even more of a passion for him to want to get out there. And you know, like I said, I can't even imagine what he's going through, but he, he's a tough guy and you know, his spirits have never really changed. You know, he had a tough night you know, the day he got injured. But other than that, he's still Courtney. Every time they go out and they hit somebody, you know, think of me, you know, because, I mean, this was my last year. And uh, the fact with the Sooners and everything, I mean, I wanted to play against them. I wanted to play against everybody on our schedule, too. Even if Tennille is awarded another year of eligibility by the NCAA, the Sooners aren't on the schedule for next year. Still, he deserves one more season. And it would be a shame if a young man who's put together so many highlight reels has as his final college football memory getting carted off the field. Our thanks to Courtney, a class act, a star out of Glenpool High School just south of Tulsa. A quick reminder, you can catch Sports Night Oklahoma weeknights at 10 o'clock right here on the Cox Channel. More than just headlines, more than just scores, it's the sports stories you won't see anywhere else. Sports Night Oklahoma, hosted by Curtis Fitzpatrick and myself, Monday through Friday at 10 o'clock on the Cox Channel. Let's check out the first half highlights as TU leads at 31-17. Terrion Adams, a big part of the offense as he breaks free for a nice run there. Helmet comes off and then Terrion again with the nice running at 83 yards rushing plus a loss, 79 yards carrying in the first half and that touchdown there. Then Smith to Brennan Marion for a pickup of 41 yards. That would set up TU in business once again, second quarter, Paul Smith, the sneak for a touchdown. And then later, the dump off to Adams. This a receiving touchdown for the junior from Oklahoma City. And then Chubb Small bringing back the thundering herd. No, goes untouched for a Marshall touchdown. And then nice play here is Paul fires back across the field to freshman Charles Clay. That was a big pickup. That set up a field goal by Jared Tracy. Gave TU a 24 to 10 lead, but back came Marshall. The touchdown there, the pass by Morris. But TU answered before the half. Jesse Meyer made a couple of key catches on the drive, which was capped by Cameron Clemens as Smith bought time and found Cameron Clemens wide open in the end zone. And here you have it. It's halftime at homecoming. TU leading the Thundering Herd 31-17. And we'll take a look at those halftime stats in just a moment. Here we go underway in the third as TU kicks it off. And it's Chubb Small from his own end zone. And he gets across the 25 to about the 28 yard line. And that is where the thundering herd will take over offensively here in the third quarter of play. Now throughout the season, the third quarter has been the most productive for Marshall. This is a, this is a quarter that the Tulsa defense is going to have to rise to the occasion and not allow that to be because they were quite productive in the second quarter. Now go back, start playing defense again like the first quarter, and then you'll get things under control. Now, the wind has been a big deal. It seems like the teams have played better a lot of times when they had the wind behind them, but Marshall, you know, in the second quarter, they went in the wind and, and, and scored uh, two touchdowns. Going into the wind again here in the third, Morris hands off to Darius Marshall. He sheds a tackler and gets across the 30 to about the 33-yard line before he is brought down by linebacker Nelson Coleman. Okay, these first five or six plays are gonna show what the Marshall coaches came up with at halftime half to see how they're going to attack Tulsa. So right now, one right up the gut. They're thinking their offensive line then is, uh, is blocking very well. Now we'll see how in the world they can, they can get the ball to number 88. That, that's gonna be a key for them this half is how well we'll pass more play. And Morris hands off again. Short gain for Marshall Coleman. Again in there, part of the tackle for the Golden Hurricane. He has he's ninth on the all-time tackles list for the Golden Hurricane with 318 coming in. Two plays right up the gut. Second time to also uh, just 
and rises up and, and negates the, the run, saying that, you know, you ran at us one time, but you're not going to do it two times in a row. Now it sets up a third medium, kind of a tight situation right here. Uh, Tulsa's been, you know, when, when they've had this situation here tonight, they've done a pretty good job with it. 370 total offensive yards for the Golden Hurricane in the first half. 262 through the air, 108 on the ground. 22 first downs to 19 for the Golden Hurricane and 5 of 8 on third down. So percentage-wise, TU definitely connecting in key moments in the first well, half. That's incredible to have 19 first downs. It's even more incredible to have 22 in there. Now, the first half, Marshall on third down converts 33% of the time. That's, that's their season average. Okay, so one out of three times they're converting. Right here, Tulsa needs to set the pace and, and take control of this series and set up the punt. Third down, that was George Clinscale, the linebacker, who just uh, off the field under his own power. Morris buying some time, fires, and it's incomplete. And that'll bring up a fourth down and four for the visiting Thundering Herd. Now, Mike, you can't emphasize enough. You go into halftime as coaches, you're emphasizing point after point after point, and you're always going to say the first five minutes are critical. I mean, every coach says that. The first five minutes are critical. And then if you're Paul Randolph exhorting your defense, say, let's get off the field in that first series, your defense has responded with everything they had, and now they're going to force a punt. You have to feel real good. That's the way you want to start the second half. Ben Swanger back to kick it. And Trey Johnson ready to receive it for the Golden Hurricane. He does so at the 33. Fair catch called, make it the 34. And that is where the Golden Hurricane offense will take over with 13.30 to go here in the third, leading 31 to 17. Now, conversely, we'll see what the Tulsa coaches talked about at halftime and how they're going to attack the Marshall defense. Interesting to note, most of the passes in the first half went to running backs. Correct. Nine, nine yeah. receptions went to the two running backs. And here's a trick play right off the bat. And it's going to work. That's Terrion Adams finally tripped up across the 35 of Marshall 34 yard line. I mean, you just have to love this guy. So he's come out of the locker room and set up the play because you have the ball on your sideline. It's the only time it'll work. You have the ball, 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 ball on your sideline. And then you, you shift. You run people out there, throw the ball out to the side, and you make it happen. Here it is. Watch quickly. See? There goes Paul. He picks it up. He's the center now. And he flips it back to the running back. Now it's Craver looking to throw it. Another trick play. This time it does not work. The Thundering Herds sniff it out, and he is dropped back at about the 44-yard line. Okay, you won for two on it. First Let's check in with Rod Thompson down on the sidelines. Rod? Hey, guys, Mike, want to tell you guys up there, not called trick plays. They're called special plays. There are no Thank trick plays. Thank you very plays, much. That's, that's my see. bad. I'm sorry, Rod. <laughs> All the different offensive sets that you have, and that's why people enjoy watching, but also these players love to be a part of that right there, coming out, you know, being loose. But they're not trick plays. They're special plays, and they have a bunch of them, and it's a team that can put up a lot of points. So, hey, we may see more trick slash special plays coming up. Back up to you, Mark. All right, Rod, thanks so much. Paul Smith's going to keep it, and he's going to dive across and get back past the original line of scrimmage at about the 33-yard line. And, Coach, I was going to ask you, as a coach, you like those trick plays, but you special. probably always worry about them, special <laughs> plays, worry about them a little bit. As a player and a fan, you got to love them. You, you do. And, and, and as a defense, you have to work on them. So you, know, you have to take time from, from your game planning each week to see what those special plays might be. Third and nine for TU. Deion Tolliver, Jesse Meyer, Charles Clay out to the left. Again, Brennan Marion off to the right. Maybe in four down territory here, Mike, so you, you can run it and get by with it. Smith back to pass. They pick up the rush momentarily. He sheds one tackler, fires incomplete intended for Jesse Meyer and that one broken up and that'll bring up a fourth down. Decision time again. First quarter Tulsa had this they went for it and didn't make it. Boy Paul Smith really showed a lot of versatility there just to avoid the rush. You think he's down right there and then had the presence to unload the ball and still set up 
I know this is going to sound, you know, weird, but it's fourth and manageable. With this offense, it's fourth and manageable when it's fourth and nine. Mm -hmm. J.J. Johnson tipping it away. He's about five inches shorter than Jesse Meyer, but able to make the play for Marshall. There you go. Last time they faked the quick punt out of this and ran a pass. Fourth and nine. This time, Smith will pooch it. And it goes into the end zone where Marshall will bring it out to the 21st and 10, trailing 31-17. 11-22 here to go in the third. It's homecoming at Chapman Stadium. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. We're back at Chapman Stadium homecoming and the Golden Hurricane leading the visiting thundering herd from the University of Marshall located up in Huntington, West Virginia. 31-17 the score. Just about 3-38 in the quarter number three. Morris will bring the offense to the line and take the snap from directly behind center. A lot of the plays tonight from the shotgun, but had a lot of success when he stepped in right behind the big fellow. Hand off to Darius Marshall, and he is brought down by Moten Hopkins at the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Brendan Jones right there. Brendan played off his blocker and then made a play off the next blocker to cause a lot of confusion in right up the get right there. Look at Big 90 right there. Nice play. Yeah, Jones with the tackle. Hopkins just kind of hopping on board at the end. Bring up a second and ten for the Thundering Herd. Morris back to pass is pushered. Gets away from trouble. Fires downfield. It's caught by Slate. And he gets to about the 48-yard line before he is brought down. That's Cody Slate. Big fella, 6'4", 225-pound sophomore, and nearly a sack for TU. Right there. Just hang on that leg, hang on that ankle. But Morris is such an athlete, he scrambles around the course, he has to be going to his right. That makes the throw a lot easier for him, and he puts it right on the money. So Hopkins Good job nearly gets the sack. Instead, it's a 27-yard gain for Marshall. They've got it first and 10 from their own 48-yard line. Hand off to Small, and he's wrapped up by Alan Karatapian as he gets across midfield to the Tulsa 49-yard line. Marshall's liking the power play. Tulsa hung in there, didn't give up any gaps, and then makes the tackle right where you need to make the tackle, setting up a second long situation here. That was a lot better play in the power play than they showed in the first half. Under 10 minutes to go here in the third. TU leading by 14. Option, Morris pitches to Small, and Craver brings him down at about the 41, or the 40 and a half, let's call it. I believe that was Passmore. That's the first time that we've seen the ball in his hands this half, we thought early on. They would go to him, and here it is in the second series. They make the pitch to him, and he sets up the first down. Marshall has really been able to move the ball about the last two-thirds of the second quarter and early on here in the third on this drive. Five receivers set. Fires to pass more. Excellent defense. Karatapian had him, slowed him down, and Coleman and Duncan helped to finish off the tackle. Nice play, but watch 55 in the middle of your screen. He sees the screenplay coming, fights off the block, and then makes the tackle. I don't know if you played that play much better than what 55 did right there. Nice job by Coleman. A senior from Dallas. He's shown a nose for the football since he arrived on campus here. 36-yard line, second down, and six for Marshall. He fires right, and that will be a first down as Morris 
finds his intended target, Sean Lazan. Of course, he had a touchdown earlier, and it's six foot six, a big, big target for the quarterback. That's, a, that's two times now tonight that Morris has looked to his right on the short hitch pattern. He, he, he must really like throwing to his right. Most quarterbacks do, but he has the, the feet to do that, and then he has the arm strength to be able to throw that wide hitch pattern to the number one receiver. They've got it at the 26. Small has it up the middle, finds a crease, and gets down to the 20-yard line, a pickup of six for Chubb Small. One of those guys that, that came into the game with turf toe, but not really showing any ill effects of that so far. But Tulsa has a man down right here, and, and injuries are not needed, of course, at any time, but for sure right now. But Chubb Small has come into the game and has made some nice runs, and they haven't been always easy runs. He's, he's gone right up the middle. He's broke some tackles, and, and he, he looks like a guy that hangs on to the ball extremely well. And they have, they have a, a good combination now going with their, with their running backs. Hear it again from the end zone. Joe Small reads the block. He makes one move to the right, one move to the left. Not everybody can do that right there. That's Randy Duncan, defensive back, injured on the play. Looked like he kind of got bent back yeah. as he was uh, trying to make the tackle. A little bit awkward, and hopefully he can get up and walk off the field. Yeah, I hate to see that happen right there. Nice shot to the crowd. This is a good crowd tonight. Coach Snyder right there. First time for Marshall to ever be in Tulsa. Yeah, it's hard to believe in today's day and age uh, that this would be the first meeting football-wise well, between these two schools. Yeah, Marshall for years did not play 1A, right? So is yeah, they correct? were 1AA. Right. right. So, which is now the subdivision of Division 1. Play, uh, championship division, right? Yeah, championship, you know division. You know championship subdivision or something. Well, yeah. yeah, that's it. And Appalachian State, let us, know, let us know that they're for real. <laughs> and they've done such a nice job of building their program there. But, you know, they're in an area where actually there's, a, of course, a lot of good football in Pennsylvania, Ohio. They're, they're, of course, they're in West Virginia, but they're closer really to those fertile uh, football uh, uh, recruiting grounds than they are in West Virginia, West Virginia being so small. Then you notice they're, they've been able to attract, if you look down the roster, people from out of state as well. And that comes from having people like Randy Moss and Chad Pennington mm -hmm. in the NFL, and, and that word gets around. Then you add to that, you're in a nice conference, and you have a chance to win in that conference, and then you're going to be able to attract players uh, to your school. And that, I think Marshall has done a nice job with that. Now, you add to this year with some of those nice players they brought in, having the injuries, then it really makes things uh, tough on you. But I've been very impressed with the character they've shown tonight, Mike. I mean, their kids play hard, and, and they're, they're not playing like they're, they're an Oakland team. They're playing like they're in, in a race to, to, to go to a bowl game. They're tending to Randy Duncan. The trainers are on the TU side. He's in the middle of the field. We've been showing, uh, we showed one flashback already, Coach Raider, to a great moment in TU football, Dan Bitson. And we've got another one from back in 1991 when you guys uh, defeated Texas A&M right here at what was Skelly Stadium at the time. Back to throw, Rubley over the middle. Got a man caught at the 45. Oh! I remember, I know you remember that play. I sure do. I was uh, in Monroe, Louisiana, starting my television yeah. career at that time and was watching that game and showed the highlights of that game that yeah. night on the broadcast. So many people remember that, and this has been homecoming. A lot of the players have come back. Chris was at the golf tournament yesterday. It was so good to see him. And he is uh, in business in Kansas City. He, he looks like he could still play. And he says he follows the Chiefs. Uh, and, and I'm telling you, just so many good memories there. And, and we forget sometimes, though, that when he came back in the 93 season, he caught 106 passes. And that was the most that year. And I don't know if anybody's done 106 since then. And he spent some time in Chicago, too, with the Bears, didn't he? Did he? I lost track of so. him, you know. I, I, I think he did. And there's part of the crowd tonight. Good crowd. 20,000, 255 on a homecoming Saturday night. Great place to bring your children. 
I remember coming here when I was about his age. We were sitting on the east side. The, the stadium over there is an afternoon game. And it may have been homecoming. I don't know. And, and Tulsa was playing Montana State. And watching the pregame warm us, Montana State had this guy that would kick the ball from the side. And they called it a soccer style kick. Mm -hmm. Okay, and his name was John Stinneru. I remember him. Yeah, and he played for many, many years. But at that time, it was really, really odd to see that. I could still remember seeing that guy kick it because I had I'd never seen that before. But those are great memories to have. Bringing, you know, I'm, I'm sure my dad brought me. I'm not sure who all was with us, but I remember seeing that coming to TU games, and that would have been probably back in '66 or '67, and in their pregame when the team ran out, and Neil Sweeney and Howard Twilley led the team out, and I think Neil was on that team. I think Howard was already with the Dolphins at that time. There we go. There's some good memories right there. We got an update from uh, Norman tonight. Missouri on top of the Sooners who missed an extra point, which could prove costly. It's 24-23 Tigers as they get set to start the fourth How quarter, ranked 11th in the country. Of course, they've had some 5-0 and starts before, but kind of petered out towards the middle and yep. late part of the season, but look like they're for real and without their leading rusher tonight, Tony Temple, who sprained an ankle. So Chase Daniel uh, so far leading that offense to a one-point lead. It's now 29-24. OU as the Sooners came back and scored a touchdown. You would think that uh, Missouri would be close tonight, but just can't hang on to do it. But again, there's already been upsets today with LSU going down. It happens every Saturday. I don't know if I've seen a season like this, though, that we've had like three Saturdays in a row with so many top five teams going down. I mean, uh, the television better get ready to have uh, South Florida playing Ohio State for the national championship to see what kind of rating, ratings are they're going to have because right now the Bulls are strong again today. You know, Cal, yeah. I think Cal was winning though. Uh, they they looked good a while ago. You mentioned South Florida. They were a program that, gosh, maybe four yeah. or five years ago they were one double A. They moved up, and I guess if you could build a program at that right. level, they're the. Where would you want to start? <laughs> just watch what they did. You want to start right in Florida. Yeah, where the football is excellent. Yeah, in the first place, and then there are big numbers. There's so many kids playing. There's just so much speed down. So that's where you play it. Then you, you, you have a, a coach like Jim Levitt, who uh, you know is just a disciplined guy, and uh, they play hard. He coaches hard, and, and then he's organized. He knows how to set all those things up. And then, and then all at once things happen in this crazy college football that allows him to be in a BCS league. All at once, boom, you know. And then now they're, they're winning. They're in the league. Big East, and yeah. they're winning that, you know. And then some of the schools are sitting around thinking, but we've been playing football for 100 years, like Tulsa. Okay, well, how are you getting a BCS league? I don't know. Got to go to Florida, I guess. <laughs> but everything happened for them that needed to happen for them to be in the BCS league. And then with parity the way it is and where they're situated, they have an excellent chance uh, to build a program because of where they are, you know. We're going to take a timeout. Randy Duncan, the injured Golden Hurricane player. They've got a stretcher out there. That is not good news. This is TU leading 31-17. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. We're back at Chapman Stadium. Rod Thompson, Dave Rader, Mike Wolf. The uh, TU training staff has been tending to Randy Duncan, defensive back, who was hurt on the last play. Been quite a delay here. It looked like maybe Coach, he was compacted a little bit, trying to make the tackle, and maybe got his head or neck bent a little bit awkwardly, uh, maybe a little uh, whiplash, possibly. Maybe he just raised his hand. That's a great sign to see right there. Everybody's concerned, of course. We love football, hate injuries. We're going to take one more look at the play where Duncan was injured. It's going to come out of the right side of your screen, number seven. There he is right there. Yes, he he got this. He got the shoulder pad right to the face. So he may have lost, you know, what time day there for a little bit. And any time you have your, your head in like that, you have, you have a chance to have that happen. Now, the good thing is he had his face in it. He didn't have his head down. And mm -hmm. All football players, young football players, listen, never have your head down when you go tackle. You never, you have your face up. And, and he had his face up, and that, that that's a good sign. And again, he raised his hand, and, and uh, 
we're pulling for him, we're praying for him. And, and he is in great hands right now. Dave Polanski is one of the best there is. And then, of course, uh, uh, the doctors at the university has it at, at their side are, are unparalleled. So he, he is in really, really good hands. His teammates, Brandon Jones, Roy Roberts, Moten Hopkins down there. I'm sure shouting words of encouragement to their teammate. Nice gesture there by quarterback Bernie Morris is telling the fans to you know, get up and show their appreciation. Yeah, I mean, you don't play the game, see your opponent do that. No. You pull, you know, that's, that's class right there with 14. Yeah, like that. Here we go, second and five. Morris fakes the handoff and rolls right and fires. He's got a man across the 10, knocked out of bounds at about the five yard line as the thundering herd pick up right where they left off. The completion gets him down to the five yard line. EG win, EJ win rather, uh, with the reception. Well, somebody lost track of their man right there because uh, this young man is too wide open right there. Excellent tackle, saving the touchdown. Sets up first and goal. Hold them to a field goal here, and you've you, you done your job. You know. So Marshall trying to pound it in with 7.37 to go here in the third quarter. The handoff to Small. He's going to try to outrun the TU defense, and he can't do it. Gets down to about the two-yard line before he's brought down by Craver. Anthony Germany also there in the mix. Watch that 27. Kenny Sims in, in for Duncan. You're gonna, you're calling, your team's calling you make a play. You get out leverage, and then you turn on the speed to make a play. Nice play, but 27. Kind of forced him to go right back there. inside. He did. Excellent play. And we have another man down. My goodness. It's a big man down. That is Brian Leggett, six foot one, 285 pound junior right guard for the Thundering Herd. Well, he's running off. That's good sound. There we go. Marshall's bringing in their big people. You know, they've had some success running right at Tulsa. You would think that's what they're bringing in the big people to do. Second and goal for Marshall. Tight formation. Hand off to Small. And he is stopped at the one yard line. Looked like he was going to get through, and uh, the TU defense. Yeah, the right side of the screen, right here. Charles Davis comes in from the corner position. Corners don't like to make that play, but Charles comes in. He came in and made the play. Excellent tackle right there, keeping him out of the end zone. Critical third down here from the one. Got 30 inches. Small he gets it. Down. He falls down. If it's the NFL, he scores, Mike, but I don't think the ball was across the plane when his knee hit the turf. So they're going to spot it at about the half-yard line. The small looked like he had the crease to get into the end zone, but just Watch the slipped on out. the turf. Knee down right there. No, he's not in. So fourth and goal from the one. Big play here, to say the least. It's small again. This time he oh. powers his way over. Second effort. Excellent effort by that young man. And that is a touchdown for the Thundering Herd. Steve Craver came running off the field like they had stopped him, but the uh, Tulsa front right here stops him. But just the second, third, fourth effort puts Small into the end zone. What you coach running backs to do is keep those feet moving, and that's exactly what Small did. And enabled him to get into the end zone for the touchdown. He has been impressive. Extra point is good. And with 5.50 to go in quarter number three, the Golden Hurricane lead is down to a touchdown. They lead it 31-24 over Marshall. Of course, TU 1-1 one one in Conference USA. And the Thundering Herd yet to win 
in or out of league play. Should be a short kickoff, okay? Now, the last two, maybe three kickoffs Marshall's had, they've kicked them short. One of them at least was on the ground. Maybe the last two has been on the ground, and Tulsa has just fell on the ball about the 30-yard line. Now, if there's some way that they get the big hop and can pick up the ball, they, Tulsa could have the ball near the 50. Now, that would be a huge advantage, of course, if they could have that happen. But right now, Marshall just does not They have no confidence kicking into the wind. So it's either going to be the pooch kick or they're going to put it on the ground again. They've had some success putting it on the ground. You would think they're going to kick it at Bryan again. We'll see what happens. Anthony Benswanger ready to kick it. Jake Collins, one of the TU fellows back there to receive it as the wind blows the football off the tee. across the 35 to about the 37 yard line. 31-24 TU. Good field position. Tulsa needs to respond to the leadership of Paul Smith. He's come out right now. You still have uh, almost six minutes left in the quarter. You can still win this quarter. We're live at Chapman Stadium. Homecoming. Rod Thompson, Dave Rader, Mike Wolf. Thundering Herd in white with green pants and TU in the blue jerseys with the gold pants. Still in the high 70s at quarter till nine in the evening. Paul Smith's going to pitch it and Adams is going to run with it and get almost to midfield. Flag on the play. Watch from your right to the left, number 82. Come in and make this block right there. Cut him down. That's a heck of a job by Jacob Frank right there. Spring. Oh, man. Somebody's going to the gate. Let's hear what referee Steve Barth has to say about that one. It's obviously coming back. He just made the call. I, I just can't hear him. He makes the call. We're going to. Oh, they're not marking Whoa. Now they're saying that the foul occurred at the line of scrimmage. That's going to back him up to the 27. Man, I don't know about that. So that'll bring up a first and 20 for TU. Smith has it, fires too high, intended for Deion Tolliver. When he was open, too. he was open. You don't see, you don't see Paul Smith miss that uh, that pass and a receiver that open too often. Nice job of looking in front of him, keep the safe, the uh, corner down, and then putting the ball in front of the safety. Smith tonight, 17 of 29 for 262 All right. they and had, two they, touchdowns. They had 12 on the field. Ball is long and right in stride. There you go. Brandon Marion, and that is a Tulsa touchdown, folks. Beautiful. 73 yards on the play. He's their big play receiver flag on the play, but as coach mentioned, looked like uh, Marshall had too many men on the field. How about the pump move by Paul Smith? Now, this time, the ball wasn't short. 
you know, early in, with, in the first half to go into the wind, the ball, the, the ball was down by the wind. This time here, you laid it in stride. And that's the thing of beauty. That's the thing of beauty. So Claire will cut it off to the sideline and did not participate. There's no foul. No foul on the play as you hear it there. Well, touchdown counts. Then it's illegal substitution. It's either, it's either you know, illegal participation or illegal substitution. It has to be one of the two. What a throw. Look at that. And he goes over 300 yards for the sixth consecutive game. Man, he had 262 impressive. before that throw and 73. Makes it 335, according to my map. The extra point is good. And TU rebuilds that 14-point advantage, 38-24. You're watching. Ren Marion in action. The 73-yard touchdown from Paul Smith. As TU's lead is 14, and we're going to keep it right here. You know, what you like about him right there is if you noticed right there at the end, he had that extra little scooch, that extra little gear. It looked like the corner had a little inside-outside leverage. You know what I'm saying? All right, and then all at once, you know, boom, you got it. And then he's right in front of the corner, and the ball's right on time, and it results in six points. Tulsa needs to respond that way. To do it with the big play just ignites your whole bench. Now they just need to come back defensively and then make something happen. Marshall's been able to, to move the football. Marion, boy, all of his touchdowns this year, 49, 75, 46, 48, 35, 52, 51, and this one of 73 yards. Extremely fast. They, they find it either zone coverage or man-to-man -man coverage, just one-on-one -on -one with the corner, and then just, you know, Paul throw it as far as you can. Span has it from his own four-yard line and gets across the 30 to about the 31, and that's where the Thundering Herd will take over down by two touchdowns, 4.50 to go here in the third quarter. Span is a uh, He's one of their key players. All right, there's the Tulsa defense. Close, they're really close this half. But Marshall's been able to take advantage of just little things being open, and they've turned them into points. Now, somewhere along this game, there's got to be a turnover. All right? And uh, this would be a great time for the Tulsa defense to do that. We'll see Marshall starting first and 10 from their own 30. Morris gets it to pass more. And he is tackled at about the 38. And that is Randy Duncan's replacement in the lineup, number 27, Kenny Sims. Sims has made two plays so far since he's been in there. Fine play there because on, the, on that play, the blocking in front of pass was outstanding. And th that's why it looked like he was all by himself. There was a defender there, but he was blocked. Very good block by the receiver in front of him. And then he has the speed to go by. Now, if he doesn't come back in, that's that's a that's a bullet out of their out of their holster right there. Passmore injured over on the Marshall sideline. Just looked like an ankle tackle. Not really sure. Yeah, sometimes where he you, got hurt. You, you tweak that ankle right there at the end of it. Smith, run it over, anxious to be back on the, on the field. Hey, you have to be really cautious right here, Mike, when the second short like this, sometimes you take the long shot. Don't give up the big play on second short. Aaron Johnson during that timeout hustled off the field for the Golden Hurricane, headed to the locker room. Brought down to 39. That'll bring up a third and one for the Thundering Herd. They've done a fine job this half in the third down conversion. It's also held up the first series. And did, well, I guess on the next drive, they may not have had the third down. Play. 
they scored, wasn't it, on a fourth down? There you go. Small. Goes nowhere as the Golden Hurricane defense makes the stop. In fact, he may have lost a yard. I think he did. That's also been at the point of attack at least two other occasions earlier in the game. And then they, they lost leverage and gave up a gap. This time, every gap's covered. Every man has their man. And, and they stack up the play and actually cause Marshall to, to lose yards, setting up the punt into the win. Tulsa could get good field position right here. Well, last time uh, he kicked into the uh, wind, I believe it was only about 22 yards. This one's going to be down at the 29-yard line, and that's where T will take over with their outstanding senior quarterback, Paul Smith, who we see right here with just some great throws tonight. That one to Cameron Clemens. And rolling on the run to Jesse Meyer. Going the other way, and then here's the touchdown to Marion. Good bump. Wild explosion on that ball. 335 yards and three touchdowns, 18 to 30 so far. There's the handoff up to about the 39 for Terry on Adams. Nice call from the sideline. Marshall was set up to take away a pass, probably to take a play action pass. And Tulsa, I don't know if they checked to the run, but they called the run and attacked it right where a, a nice weakness was. Nice call right there by Coach. Under two and a half to go here in the third. Golden Hurricane leading by 14. They'll run it again. Nowhere to go this time. Adams with football again. As Adams is brought down near the line of scrimmage by Michael Janik. Another man down, Mike. Michael Janik throws to the tackle. Which is nine out on the field. Andrew Marshall. One of the big guys. See this happen again? Yeah, we went. You'd have to think that something happened, uh, you know, uh, in his lower extremity. That's it's usually what happens to the big guys in there when they're slow. You know, get back up. Somebody somehow he gets caught in a pile, or his ankle gets caught. And hopefully not a knee is caught in there. And, you know, those guys are used to playing in there, and they, they take a, a beating. And you know they're hurt when they stay down like that. That's Byron Tinker. And he's heading off the field under his own power. 6'4", 281-pound senior. Large youngster right there. And when he hits the ground, you know it. From the 39. Smith fires. Oh, incomplete near midfield intended for Meyer. And I know the rule is if you touch it, you should catch yep. it. You should. You should catch that. Uh, Marion was open again deep. Somehow Paul didn't see him there. There was a bust of coverage. The safety bit on the crosser. And he had uh, gone by the corner. And he was waving at him. Just didn't see him. Third and ten for TU. Fake handoff to Tolliver. And he's going to throw to Tolliver. Just gets it away. Stiff arms a guy, stays on his feet, gets out of bounds at about the 47. What an effort there by Tolliver. Nice job here. A lot of protection going on right here because it's a two-man route. And then it comes a three-man route when you dump it down to Tolliver, the guy to whom you just faked. That touchdown pass by Paul Smith to Brendan Marion earlier puts him over 8,000 yards for his career. Fourth and short. TU kicks it away. And it's fair caught by Span at the 15-yard line. And that's where the Thundering Herd will take over, trailing 
38-24 with 1.38 to go here in the third. You would think that Marshall is going to run a couple of plays, go to the fourth quarter to the winter back, and, and then probably expand their offense and, and, and do all sorts of things with 88, with 20, 24, you know, and 20, and, and just open up their offense because they, they have to feel a lot of confidence right now. So Marshall comes out trailing by two touchdowns. Of course, TU made that impressive stop to force the punt on Marshall's last possession. The handoff to Darius Marshall. Darius Marshall. He's brought down. A couple of big fellows there. Chris Chamberlain also there in the mix, as was 99 for TU. That's Terrell Neiman. Nice job of Neiman right there. Yeah. Come out the first play, give up two yards. This is the kind of defense you want to play. 32, everybody's counting on him to make a play right there. Good shot of Smart player, good leader for this team. Going to bring up a second and eight. Pass is complete. It's win. And nice hustle there by Craver, who missed the tackle originally and then got back up and, and ran him down to make the play. You don't, you don't like him to miss the tackle, but you sure love the way he responded. He didn't give up and can't, comes back and makes the play. Look, he even tried to pop that ball. You see, he had that left fist and tried to pop the ball. Out. Nice job. Good thing. Pick up of 25 for EJ Wynn. And Marshall has it first and 10 at the 42. Morris has time, thinks about running, decides against it, throws. No way. And that passes out of bounds, incomplete. You don't feel near as threatened when he scrambles to the left, do you? Yeah. No. You know, and, and, and that's true with any right-handed quarterback. But I tell you, when this Bernard Morris scrambles to his right, things happen. Good job. Downfield, it's also had him covered. Then they put pressure on him, forced him to his left. Really hard to make a completion that way. Look at that wrist again, Mike. He's not looking for time. He's looking for a play. So there is just 18 seconds left to go before Marshall will get the wind at their back for the fourth quarter. throws downfield high and incomplete intended again for EJ win and that'll bring up a third and ten is this pass more coming back out here's here's a look here Charles Davis has it covered Kenny Sims is going to come over and make the play excellent effort right there by the Marshall receiver but it was well covered Paul Randolph making the call right there So third and 10 for Marshall, trailing 38-24 late in the third here on a homecoming Saturday night at Chapman Stadium. Morris fires. He has his man. It is Slate, and Slate is going to make a big gain out of this one. He's still up, finally tripped up at the 11-yard line, and what an effort by Slate, the big fella, with a big game. First 32 yards. First touch of the night, I think, for the big man. That's going to wrap up quarter number three, 38 24 TU, but the Thundering Herd on the doorstep. You're watching Golden Hurricane Football on the Cox Channel. And welcome back to the game of the week right here. Jerry Ostrowski, hey, big game here tonight. Great atmosphere, homecoming. Talk a little about the atmosphere and having all those former players. They came back in this atmosphere out here. Well, it's been great. You know, we had a big tailgate day. A bunch of guys came back. Guys I didn't know were coming back came back today. It's kind of a real nice gathering place. Uh, Todd Graham's done a tremendous job of getting the alumni back with the program, getting guys here interested in the football program once again. It's been a great thing. Having all these guys back definitely helps with the excitement. Like you said, the success that, you know, is coming here at the University of Tulsa, what they've been able to do. Talk a little bit about this staff and just that connection that all you guys saw you tailgate before. You know, some of the guys ran the guys out. 
they were pretty fired up about that, but good to see that atmosphere. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's what it's all about. I think, you know, it started with Coach Craig Thorpe. He did a tremendous job of getting this thing turned around and going. Now Todd's come in, a guy that knows the traditions around here. It's taking it to another level. Uh, we got a new building. We're getting a new stadium. I mean, if you'd have told me this was going to happen, I'd have told you you were crazy. I mean, it's been a long time coming. I left in 91. Probably should have happened then. It's finally here in 07, and it's been great. Jerry, we appreciate your time. PJ spending it with us, and we'll let you enjoy it again. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Jerry Scott, you're right there. Back up to you, Mike. All right, thank you, Rod. And the pass on first and 10 goes incomplete. And I know Jerry O spent a lot of his career in Buffalo. In fact, all of his career in Buffalo. He was drafted somewhere else, ended up in Buffalo. Great career there. And probably couldn't have been very happy with, <laughs> with the, his former team on Monday night. Oh, that is disappointing. You know, people don't uh, they forget Jerry was cut four times before he made it the team, and then he played a long time in the NFL. Perseverance, determination, clash young man right there. Second down and 10 from the 11 for the Thundering Herd. 38-24 as we get underway here in the fourth quarter. Handoff Darius Marshall. He gets down to about the six and a half. Good to see was Coleman on the tackle there. He Coleman hung, and Chamberlain, I think. Good, because he, he held his ground right there. Looked like a Marshall really had a nice play. He had some push come off the line of scrimmage, and then all at once, 55 came in and placed his hat on him. Uh, a critical tackle for him right there. Now, you know, most every third down is big, but this is a big third down. Right there. They have to get to the one for a first down. Play clock down to four. Morris quickly in the shotgun, gets the snap off. Going to his left, don't let him go to his right. He's going to run man. it, shoved out of bounds at the six by Brandon Jones. You got to like big Brandon chasing him out of bounds, you know. That play took forever as we take one more look. Right, you flush him out of the pocket, you have good coverage, Make him go left and keep him that way. Now, your one-on-one -on -one situation, I don't know if you want 90 on him, but Big Brandon, <laughs> look at him, pushes him out of bounds. What a play by Big 9-0. Now, it's fourth down. Fourth and five, under 14 to go, 14-01. And Nelson Coleman and the Golden Hurricane defense signal a timeout. And we will take one as well. Golden Hurricane leading Marshall 38-24. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel. Degar rolling to the left, rolling, waiting, throwing toward the end zone, and it is caught in the end zone. Touchdown, TU! Of course, that was Troy Degar throwing the pass back in 95, and of course, he threw the 99-yarder to Wes Caswell in Norman in 96. Troy Degar, the only quarterback in TU history to beat Oklahoma State and Oklahoma in career. Michael Kedzor went through some tough health problems, beat him. Has a beautiful wife, beautiful family, successful businessman down in Claremore. What a moment for the University of Tulsa today and for Michael Kedzor. Good memories again. Thank you. Mike Davis. Of course, Mike, our producer tonight. Fourth down play from the six-yard line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Delay of game. Still. That's out of, out of a Whoa. timeout. Well, that's a that'll get your dander up on it as a as a coach. That will. Wow. So instead of fourth down from the six, they'll back them up to the eleven. And they're still going for it. Probably have to. Down for two touchdowns. Empty backfield for Morris. Can Barely it. gets it off again. And Nelson Coleman's going to bring him down at around the 29-yard line. 
That was a three-man rush, Mike. Nice job of the TU defense right there. Check out that one more time. Nelson Coleman lined up with his hand on the ground. He came off the right tackle and just used his speed and just blew by the right tackle. Look out of the left side of your screen. There he comes, AK, putting pressure up the middle. When the defensive lineman on the field it's also made the, made the uh, personnel adjustment, took all the big guys off, and had the fastest team that they could muster out on the field. So TU takes over from their own 27. It's a nice run across the 40-yard line by Charles Clay. Had carried on, you know, this half. Get the ball back to him. The young man's impressive. Seems to have a lot of moxie to him. Seems to be disciplined. Seems to be very mature as a running back. You can see why the coaches have a lot of confidence in him. And they give it to him running, they give it to him throwing. So first down from the 40. It's Clay again. This time he's wrapped up. Charles Clay with the good play again. Maybe lost a yard on the play. And another man there. That was Josh Johnson, the injured thundering herd. He's the guy that made the tackle on that play as well. Josh Johnson made the tackle. So if you had two Marshall guys hurt, would they be two herds? <laughs> Let's see. It's been a while since college English, but uh, two herdsmen? Could be. No. We could go with that. Okay. Let's just say they had a herd of injuries coming in. And, uh, boy, they, they had this game. That's for sure. That is a long plane trip back to have ice on you. Mm -hmm. What a play by the Tulsa defense. Good. You know, been looking for a big play all night. Big play all night. Hadn't been able to force the turnover. And then they had the big fourth down stop as it looked like Marshall had momentum going into the end zone. And then the stop, not only no, not a field goal attempt, but zero points and had the big sack and end up giving your offense decent field position to start the drive. Yeah, and that play really capsulates Marshall's season because they're 0-5, haven't really gotten any breaks. Only right. have forced two turnovers all season long defensively and then get sacked on fourth down after a delay of game penalty coming out of a timeout. 39 yard line, the line of scrimmage, second down and 11 for TU. They're going to run a reverse. And Jamad Williams has it. Jamad Williams gets to about the 43 and a half, maybe the 44. Well played by Marshall right here. They were in a zone defense. Everybody held their ground. Nobody went anywhere. They were ready for this special play. So third down and let's call it seven for the Golden Hurricane. Marshall three men front. Smith fakes the handoff and rolls to his left and fires. As a man, it's complete for a first down, and that is Trey Johnson making the grab for TU. Nice play. I'm still taken back every time on third down when the play action works. Of course, the blitz is coming. Marshall ran the zone blitz. That leaves more gaps underneath to be open. Paul Smith will find more gaps. That was Trey Johnson's third catch. TU now with 523 yards of offense tonight, about a buck 50 more than the visiting Thundering Herd. Now to take some of that 500 off right there. The last few times they've done that, Whitmore went right up the middle after faking to Clay. This time he gives it to Clay, and Marshall makes the tackle for loss. Michael Janik in on the tackle. He's a freshman defensive end for Marshall. Brings up a second down. Didn't end play like a freshman there. No. Excellent. Nice. Play. Backs him up to the 46. First corner blitz. Marshall's shown tonight. Tulsa's making adjustments. Now Marshall calls it off. Second and 14 for TU. 
Smith fires high. It's deflected. Whoa, Trey Johnson still almost brought it down. That was a hoop, that was a hoop ball both sides of the, of, the, of the field right here. Here's a hoop, and here's a hoop. Ashton Hall deflecting it. He was banged up a little bit earlier. Back in there for Marshall. From the 44-yard line. Marshall may be bringing a blitz here. Smith steps up and throws. Long intended for Meyer. And that's going to bring up a fourth and long for the Golden Hurricane. Tulsa's leaving their offense on the field right now. You would think they're just going to hold them out there for a little bit and then bring the punt team out. Or just pooch kicking. Marshall's caught. Change the personnel. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight, nine, two, eleven. Last time Tulsa went to their pooch punt formation. Kind of a shank off of the foot of Smith. Goes out of bounds. Goes out of bounds at the 23 yard line. That's where the Thundering Herd will take over. We're going to take a timeout. TU leading at 38 24. You're watching Golden Hurricane Football on the Cox Channel. Thursday night, it's week eight of high school football action on the Cox Channel. We'll kick off our gridiron coverage with Dell City at Edmond North. And then Friday in Tulsa, it's Hale at Bixby, the Cox Channel, bringing home your favorite teams all season long. Eleven minutes, a lot of football yet, Mike. You're exactly right, Coach Raider. 38-24, Dave Raider, Rod Thompson, Mike Wolf. With you here on the Cox Channel, bringing you Golden Hurricane football on this homecoming Saturday night. Morris on the keeper, and Chamberlain reads it. Like, look, making the tackle at the line of scrimmage. You can't fool the young man. I mean, a well-designed play right there. Out of the screen to the top, you see that uh, Tulsa has the pitch covered, and they have the pitcher covered. up a second down and long for the thundering herd Morris going deep had a man but incomplete Corey Roberts on the coverage intended for pass more covered like a proverbial glove right there Passmore is faster than Roy had. Passmore with three catches for 18 yards tonight. He's carried the ball a couple of times on the ground as well. Third and ten. It's also playing zone here. Fires, it's caught, and that'll be a first down for the Thundering Herd. Chamberlain in on the tackle. The pass caught by EJ Wynn. It just calls it, comes with the uh, rush that they used on the big fourth down play a while ago. This time they just couldn't get to the quarterback. And since you can't get to the quarterback, he has a whole lot of time to throw. When you give him that much time, then a completion is usually the result. So first down, Thundering Herd. Morris fires, has a man nearly caught, but falls incomplete. Craver and Roy Roberts defending. Nice job of Roy Roberts again. Got some cramping going on sometimes when you try to extend yourself out. That's Sean Lazan. Lay cramps on you. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, sometimes things are just funny. There you are, you're cramping, you're, you're playing as hard as you can, 
<laughs> they say, okay, I know you're camping, but get off the white so we can continue with the game. <laughs> they say, slide on over here and hurt. Don't hurt and interrupt the game. Come on off the field. And hurt. So Marshall second and 10 from the 35 yard line, trailing 38-24. Pass is caught. Germany knocks him out of bounds. And that was Darius Marshall on the reception. Check it out one more time as Germany with a nice hit. It was, you can hear it up here. Right there. Nice explosion follow through. Another big third down. 9.20 to go here in the fourth. Crowd to their feet. Morris flushed out of the pocket. And boy, what a job there by the TU defense to bring him down. Wow, what an effort. Excellent effort. Moten Hopkins, Clean Scales. They come and bring the pressure, force him to his left. He's looking to run. There's no way, nowhere to go. George Clean Scales playing with his hands, keeping his body low, keeping good football position, making the play right there. Wilson Garrison, as you see him right there, also Wilson, in there to make the play. Nice play by Wilson Garrison right there. So that'll bring up a fourth down. Thundering herd back to punt. Hearts play. Got the wind at their backs. Kick is high. TU just getting out of the way. They're going to down it at the 23-yard line. 38-24 TU, 8.15 to go in this one. It's homecoming Saturday night. You're watching Golden Hurricane Football on the Cox Channel. The one-yard line. Degar calling signals. OU showing blitz. Back to pass in his own end zone. Degar throws to the near side, and it is caught by Caswell at the 30, to the 40, to the 50. He may go all the way. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, TU. And no flags. Holy smokes. It's a 99-yard TD for the University of Tulsa. The longest pass play in the history of Hurricane football. Another great moment in Hurricane was, history. And, Coach, I remember that was the day. season. Uh, that was my first football season here. And you had the win over OU, the win over Iowa, and there was one other one in Colorado there. Colorado State. Colorado State back to back to back. And got to see that one in person. I remember I was down by the end zone when DeGar let it fly. Saw West catch it, but then I was blocked out. Couldn't see. I knew what was happening, but couldn't see it all. It was a special moment there. And how about with, you know, again, that was Troy making it happen. But, and uh, Wes uh, set it up the time before that. A lot of fun right there. Big drive right here for Tulsa. They can ice the game right here with the score. Hurricane pick up three on first down, brings up second and seven from the 25 yard line. Play has it. And he's going to pick up enough for the first down before he's knocked out at the 39-yard line. Dashton Hall making the hit to knock him out of bounds. You know, if you're a running back, you want to come and play this offense. You run with the ball on a handoff. Sometimes you're in the backfield taking the direct snap. And sometimes you're the receiver. Uh, uh, Coach Malzahn finds a variety of ways to put the ball in the hands of the running backs. Clay now with five catches for 102 yards as he surpasses the century mark tonight for receiving. Terry on Adams sheds a tackle, flag down in the play as Adams gets across the 30 to 25 and finally pushed out of bounds at the 18 yard line. I'm going to call holding here to bring it back. Holding number 56. On the offense, 10 yards penalty, first down. That is Walter Boyd getting flagged. Look at this. I mean, this is a huge hole. I don't think the holding had anything to do with it. They're going to say right there that 56 pulled him down, and I guess it did have something to do with it. Whether he did or not, that's the way it looks to the umpire. They grabbed his shoulder pad and pulled him down. 
That, that's a shame right there. Tulsa has overcome numerous penalties this half, and they keep starting first and 20, second 20, and hard to get a drive going that way. The race is a nice play by Terrion Adams. 45 yards, and that came back, and so TU now on the 30-yard line. Smith pitches to Jamad Williams. He's got some running room across the 40 to the 43. Get some of it back. And he is dragged down there. Time and time again, the Tulsa receivers are impressive when they catch the ball. Over and over again, they're impressive with their downfield block. Excellent job right there. And again, you got to talk about one of the big guys, big 5'6", out there leading everybody, big Walter Boyd. Nice job of Walter. Need to get to the 50 for a first down. Option right. Smith holds on to it. Now he's going to throw a little short pass to Williams. And Marshall there to make the tackle as they kind of read that one. And they will stop him short. Play made there by John Saunders, the six foot, 192 pound sophomore safety. Tulsa's had a good night on third down. And some, some have been you know, third and long, third and medium. Now this is one that you expect to make when it's third and short. And this is the touchdown play that worked well there. Quick snap and they get it to Adams on the pitch and he has the first down and more across the 40 yard line down to the 39. Here's all right here, come up in the unbalanced and flip it out there. It's also caught him with too many on the field. Didn't need the help though, though. I wonder what would happen if they had 11 on the field. They may have gone the distance. <laughs> six minutes to go here at Chapman Stadium. TU leading it 38-24. With a 31-17 at the half. Both teams scored a touchdown in the third and both scoreless here in the fourth. Jamad Williams again stood up as he got close to the 35-yard line. Getting a little clock management. Right now the coaches are going to keep their eye on the clock. Marshall has three timeouts left. What they'd like to do is score a touchdown, of course, but then just squeeze the time out of the game and just put this thing away. Yeah, at least get a field goal and make it a three possession game. sorts of communication going on right now. Tulsa's changing the play, Marshall's changing their defense. And I think they're gonna get called and then Tulsa, delay. And then calls, it, calls a timeout, all right? Close to getting called for delay game, they call good, a timeout good time instead, out. yeah. It's a good timeout. Didn't have the play you wanted. You could control the ball game, have a two touchdown lead. Don't do anything to go backwards here. You know, don't, don't have that huge negative play. Let's just call timeout and get the play we want. Four fifty-two to go. Let's send it down to the sidelines and Rod Thompson. Rod. Hey guys, we talked to Jerry Oskoski. Now we're gonna to talk to the career tackle leader, University of Tulsa, Mike the Hammer White. Mike, I talked to Jerry about all the atmosphere, everybody coming back. Let's kind of get your perspective. Pretty good to get all these guys back and enjoy the excitement of TU football. It is. I think it's a great job that you know everybody able to come to town and you know support TU. A lot of these guys we hadn't saw in years. And I mean, it's a great thing when we all not, haven't saw each other in so long, we get back and it's just like we saw each other yesterday. The program doing an outstanding job. As we said, you are the career leader, but you're being threatened right now by the defense, Nelson Coleman. Hey, he's 318 coming into this game, has a chance to break your record. Talk a little bit about that record and, and, and having someone like his caliber having a chance to be able to break it. Well, I think it's, it, it's a great record for now, but records are meant to be broken. And I see it as, you know, as long as TU has continued to improve and do the things that we want them to move ahead and do. 
I mean, it's just a record. And I mean, I would be more than happy for him to share it or let him break it and still be happy with number two. Well, Mike, we appreciate your time, buddy. We'll let you get back to the game. All right, brother. Thanks a lot. All right, Mike the Hammer White right there. He's the career leader, tackler here at the University of Tulsa. Back up to you, Mike. All right, thank you, Rod. The completion there to Cameron Clemens, and that'll move the chains as the Golden Hurricane pick up another first down on the strike from Paul Smith to 13, Clemens. Nice timing right right there, the double slant. Paul Smith throws it so well. First time we've seen it tonight. Now the clock is inside of four minutes. Tulsa's doing exactly what they want to do. It's Clay. Across the 20 down to about the 16-yard line. Pick up of 11 on the clock. Yep. First down. Stop the clock. We're going to wind the clock here. Two tight ends are in the game right here. Pull the guard around, lead him around. And then Clay just makes a guy miss. 141 total all-purpose yards tonight for Charles Clay, the freshman. This time the pitch mishandled. Intended for Clay and the Marshall Thundering Herd recover the fumble, just their second fumble recovery all season long. And boy, Dave, you talk about a chance to ice this one yeah. and doesn't happen. Marshall will have another chance. We're gonna watch the tape tonight and say, well, maybe that's not what we want to do right there. Had everything in control, the clock was running down. We were almost to three minutes. You know, let, let's go to 25 or nine again. So instead of maybe putting it up 41-24, possibly scoring another touchdown, Marshall has the football back with 3.17 to go and a, facing a two-touchdown deficit. Tulsa played well the last two series on defense. Chamberlain. Chamberlain forces him up into the pocket, and they're going to get a sack. And that is Moten Hopkins. Look at the top of the screen. 32 comes in, presses up, upfield. Fixco puts his hand on him. And then the big man, Moten Hopkins, brings it down. A loss of one will make it second and 11. And Morris pressured again, fires, caught by Passmore. He is dragged down. Flag on the play. Should be a holding goal. Personal foul. Ill use to the hands on 93 on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Be tacked onto the end of the run. Oh. So that penalty against Hopkins, who the play before made the sack and comes back with the illegal use of the hands on that play. That turns a 10-yard gain into a 25-yard gain. Marshall still has three timeouts. Tulsa just can't give up the big play. Just you know, force the clock to keep running. Keep tackling in bounds. What was weird on that last play too, Davis? Passmore was close to the sideline. Could have gotten out of bounds and just kind of went down. Morris fires. It is incomplete. Anthony Germany on the coverage intended for Chubb Small. Marshall's trying to walk the sideline. <laughs> They're just unable to do it right now. Dropping it and going out of bounds. 2.05 left. They have three timeouts. No need to be in a hurry right now. Clock is stopped and one, one, one deep play. And they think it'd be most successful right now. And then they go empty one more time, right? Pass more and Darius Marshall out to the right. Morris looking over the middle has slipped. And he picks up a nice chunk of yardage before he is brought down by Chamberlain at the 29-yard line. Nice tackle by Chris again. 
A lot of time right here. Give Bernard Morris this much time. He's going to find that crosser. This is a very effective route versus that coverage. First and 10 for the Thundering Herd. Morris with time. Finds Darius Marshall. He's got plenty of open field. It finally closes up on him, but not before he gets inside the 10 yard line. Another thundering herd first down. Karatapian and Charles Davis there to help with the tackle. Had to be a bust on that one. Somebody was supposed to be watching him, and then they just let him go. Of course, quarterback finds him on that. And now his first goal inside the 10. Now they use one of their timeouts. Good time to use a timeout. You know, Marshall now, with the coach going to come together, going to go with their red zone offense. What have you run already has been successful. What have we not run that we feel real good about right here because we would li we'd like to score as quickly as possible mm -hmm. and then go for the onside kick and leave as much time a as we could to, to go down and score and tie the game. That's what's going through their head. So the, the first thing is first. How are we going to score the touchdown? Okay. The Tulsa coaches on the other side, there's Coach Graham. He's telling his guys, just keep them out of the end zone. Make them go the long, hard way, tackle inbounds, but make sure you make the tackle and then just get up and play another down. First and goal from the nine, empty backfield again for the Thundering Herd. Morris throws, Slate has it. He's down to the two, Karatapian there to make the tackle. Marshall will call a timeout with 1.22 to go. This all Tulsa's do. Tulsa's forcing every throw up underneath because, it, it, again, really smart. Don't want to give up the touchdown that fast. Don't make the tackle. Force the clock to run or force Marshall to take another timeout those are to your advantage because now we're, we're at uh, a minute 22 to go and you can continue to tackle them in the run off the clock and then you know Marshall did score and would might have the onside go their way and they're out of timeouts and their percentage of the score is way way down. that was Slate's fifth catch and he is at the century mark 100 yards on the dot Second and goal, thundering herd from the two. Morris throws, it's caught, it's slate, and it's a touchdown for Marshall. They took four seconds. Corey Roberts is there, he's just a hair late. Slate's a big target too, 6'4", 225 pounds, and yeah. in a lot of ways, like a receiver. Yeah. More than he, the tight end. He's a quasi tight end. Yeah. And he has some speed. Big point right here. So any way to knock it down. Big time advantage. Ben Swanger for the extra point. It's up. And it is good. So okay. we we're go. 18 to go. We have a seven point ball game. He leading at 38 31 is Morris. We'll find Cody Slate coming right at your camera. What a shot here. Right at you. His sixth catch gets him in the end zone. What year is he, Mike? He is just a sophomore. He's a good looking next year. We have to play them next year? Yes, up in uh, Huntington. Yeah, they didn't play Marshall on the schedule, Marshall, Central Florida, or UAB the first two years. Of course, they ended up playing Central Florida in the Conference right, USA right. Championship game. This year, they, they play, they've already played UAB. They're taking on Marshall tonight, and then they head to Central Florida next week. So they can hold on. They can take a four and two overall record and a two and one Conference USA mark to the Sunshine State next week. Now the Marshall coaches gathered them all up and they said, hey, you remember Monday night? Remember what the Cowboys did? We got to do that right now. Send somebody fast out onto the right side, poke it out there. They're, they're going to go to the, looks like they're going to the left though. Tulsa has, uh, they're, they're meeting it man to man. 
And now the Marshall kicker is going to kick this thing into the turf and try to get the big hop. Big play coming right here. Chamberlain hits off his chest, bounces back. He brings it down, and TU will take over and just about be able to run this one out with a minute. If, if you Todd Graham right there, you're saying, oh, beautiful kick. That's, that's what we want because it really doesn't give Marshall a chance to make a play on this ball. And then you have Chris Chamberlain catching it. Well, twice, got it. <laughs> and that's exactly who you want in the game right there. Now, Tulsa can run out the clock here. They have 106 seconds. And they tell us the coaches have a little chart saying we should be able to take a knee even with one timeout to run off 106 seconds. I used to have that little card and I did bring it with me tonight, <laughs> Mike. 114 to go. They do call the timeout. That is Marshall's final timeout of the evening. And I think you're right, Coach, if my math serves me right, uh, they can run out the clock. Well, of course, you can catch Sports Night Oklahoma right here on the Cox Channel every Monday through Friday night at 10 o'clock. That's weeknights at 10 right here on the Cox Channel. More than just headlines, more than scores. It's the sports stories you won't see anywhere else. Join Curtis Fitzpatrick and myself every Monday through Friday night at 10 right here on the Cox Channel. Officials are not supposed to speed up the game here. And if you're Coach Snyder, you say, well, you're not supposed to slow it down either. I mean, it's it's this is one of the big differences between college football and the NFL. Because the NFL would mark it right now. And Tulsa now can march it, uh, watch the clock go down into the 20s. And then that'll be the end, uh, end of the ball game. People are piling out of the stadium. Must feel good about what they saw tonight. Saw better defense tonight. Saw another, another fine offensive performance. Everybody here likes to watch number 12 play. And that'll about wrap things up on the fourth victory of the season for the Golden Hurricane as Paul Smith takes the knee. 24 of 39 for 385 and three touchdowns tonight. Another big night for the senior quarterback is the Golden Hurricane. Get win number four on the season and their second win in Conference USA. The final tonight, 38-31. We'll be back to wrap things up after this timeout. You're watching Golden Hurricane football on the Cox Channel.